football, Lincoln, Nebraska on game day. Today it's the Huskers and the Oklahoma State Cowboys. One of the most memorable games of the 1998 Big 12 season came down to a final play between Oklahoma State and Nebraska with the second-ranked Huskers leading by seven. For the win. Today, senior Cowboy Nathan Simmons gets one more chance to crack the undefeated Huskers armor. and your local Dr. Pepper bottler present Big 12 football. Today, from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, it's the Oklahoma State Cowboys taking on the sixth-ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers. And good afternoon, everybody. I'm Drew Goodman. This is a series that has been dominated by Nebraska, but last year it came down to the final snap of the game, and that has provided Oklahoma State with confidence going into today. It's also provided Nebraska with a little bit of motivation going into today. Let me bring in my partner, former All-Pro tight end Keith Jackson. They had a quarterback controversy earlier in the year. Would it be Bobby Newcomb? Would it be Eric Crouch? They have settled on Crouch, and he has played well. Crouch is the man. He can get it done for you two ways. He can get it done on the ground, does a great job of running the ball, and he can get it done in the air. He did a great job of placing that ball against Missouri last week. He also does a very good job of placing the ball in the hands of Correll Buckhalter. That is always a good decision. Last week, he rushed for 132 yards. The reason we mention that is, believe it or not, it's the first time in a Nebraska back had gone over the 100-yard mark in six games. You know what? As strong as this Oklahoma State defense is, they're going to need Correll today. He's got to do a great job of running up in there, taking some pressure off his quarterback. Well, the Cowboys had success a year ago being physical and running right at Nebraska with Nathan Simmons, and we understand that's a game plan again today. You know, they've been a little disappointed in their running game. Nathan Simmons had to have a big day, had a great day last year, 116 yards against Nebraska. He's got to have a terrific day today. He's got to run the ball. Time for Time of possession is a key, Drew. Well, ultimately, this game could be told by the defenses. Nebraska comes in with the fourth-ranked defense in the country. Oklahoma State, number three. And they're great linebackers everywhere you look. How about Julius Jackson in Nebraska? He's been in the end zone this year. And they don't come any finer than Terrell Knowles of Oklahoma State. 12 football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. By eFollett.com. The college textbooks, get out of line. By Sonic, America's drive-in. By Southwestern Bell, friendly neighborhood global. And by your local BMW centers, the ultimate driving machine. Memorial Stadium, Lincoln, Nebraska. Time to find the third member of our crew, Jim Knox. Jim, where are you? Oh, I am in the sea of red. That's right, 230th consecutive sale out here in Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. And these fans can hardly wait for kickoff. But first, got to tell you about the Southwestern Bell Big 12 Player of the Week. And for the third straight week, it is Josh Heupel, Oklahoma Sooner quarterback. Last week against Louisville, Heupel passed, Heupel passed over 400 yards along with five touchdowns. So Josh Heupel but once again, your Southwestern Bell Big 12 Player of the Week. And how about the big contest Southwestern Bell is having? Just call 877-BIG-12 Fun to enter to win $100,000. It's the Southwestern Bell Homecoming Giveaway. Also, don't forget to vote for the Southwestern Bell Big 12 Player of the Week. Just log on to Big12Sports.com. Up next, it's the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week. The sellout crowd is super ready. Nebraska and Oklahoma State kickoff is coming up. Oregon State USC highlights college football Saturday on Fox Sports Net 2. You know, most men get pretty shook up about losing their hair. But today, many of them are learning about Bosley Medical. They use your own living hair to fill in the thin spots. Just look at that. It really works. You can treat it like real hair because it is real hair. Your own naturally growing hair. So you don't have to worry about it. Bosley Medical is the world's most experienced hair restoration practice. For over 25 years, they have performed more than 130... 
are few places like it. Lincoln, Nebraska Memorial Stadium on game day. Oklahoma State won the toss. They have deferred to the second half. It's a cool autumn morning. Temperature about 42 degrees. In fact, earlier this morning, it was in the mid-20s. They expect a high of around 50 degrees today, but there's not a cloud in the sky. A little bit of a wind from the northwest, about 14 miles an hour. Russ Schwetman will kick it deep to either 25, Joe Walker, or number 34, Randy Stella, who, believe it or not, is a linebacker. This is Stella, two yards deep. He's coming out. into people like a linebacker out to about the 20 yard line they're still bringing him down eric crouch is the quarterback he's a sophomore 21 of 34 throwing the football get this he may be the fastest guy in red he can flat out move up front the offensive line brought to you by southwestern bell wireless another sophomore dominic rayola he's from honolulu he goes close to 300 pounds and of the skill guys, Bobby Newcomb's now wing back again. He was in the end zone a week ago on a 53-yard hookup. Well, Crouch wants to throw it. He's under pressure. And the pass is complete inbounds at the 36-yard line. Tracy Wistrom. Great catch and great improvisation by the quarterback Crouch. I tell you what, it, it, it looked like there was a problem in, at the beginning of the game. And when you watched it, that was a perfect pass that he threw. The defensive line brought to you by Southwestern Bell Wireless. Courtney Mallory scored two weeks ago against Mississippi State on an interception return. Terrell Knowles is terrific. Very good linebackers with Oklahoma State. And Alvin Porter, the senior corner, is having a terrific season. In fact, he's their leading tackler. Here's Newcomb on a reverse. And he'll get about five yards. Jack Golden, Evan Howell, bring him down. You know, anytime you see Newcomb in that slot and he goes in motion, that's where he's going to be dangerous. Watching him practice a little, a little bit yesterday, he goes in motion, he always gets the ball. Well, Frank Solich wants to find as many ways as possible to get Newcomb involved naturally. Here's Alexander. And he gets maybe a yard to the 41, which will set up a third down and five. There's Knowles again, number 32. He's very active, 6'1", 230-pound senior backer from Washington High School in Tulsa. Knowles has got to be the team leader. He's the guy that just got to step up. Kenyatta Wright is out for the game. He's the guy they're going to be looking to to make some big plays today. They need the 47-yard line. Option, nowhere to run. Great play. Adam Edwards, the free safety, came up. They were disciplined on uh, option defense there, weren't they? The one thing that Rob Ryan said he wanted to do is that he wanted to make them go through that pitch option and play the option at the end, and that's exactly what he did. He made Crouch pitch the ball, and that's why he went to the option. And there's also a personal foul against Nebraska. When you watch Crouch, he's come down the line, make him go through his option. Don't let him beat you. Picks the ball to Dan Alexander, and that's when the safety is there to make the play. They're going to string that out all day today, Drew. There's Rob Ryan, the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma State. You know him well. You played for his dad. Yeah, I did. And you know what? They're great defensive minds. You know, they do a great job of making sure they put their guys in the right place. Sometimes it seems like they're just running around and making plays, but everybody has a position to be in, a zone to be in, a cutback zone to be in. So it's really a disciplined defense. Terrence Richardson back deep. The nation's second-ranked putt punter is Dan Haydenfeld. And this is not one of his better efforts. Line drive. Richardson, flip side of the 50 to the 48-yard line. So great field position for B.J. Tiger and the Oklahoma State offense. Tony Lindsay was going to be the starter at the beginning of the year. He went down in game one with a knee injury. He's still a few weeks away. 
Tiger can beat you in a number of ways. Our Southwestern Bell Wireless offensive front, Josh Lind has been the steadiest of this group up front. They need to have a big day. Ethan Howell is the fastest player in Orange today. He runs 4-3 in the 40. He's their big playmaker when they throw the football. Simmons lost the football. It's still on the ground. And Nebraska has the football. Clint Finley got it. The absolute worst thing that could happen for Oklahoma State would be putting it on the ground, obviously, because this conjures up memories of two weeks ago when they were in Starkville, Mississippi, and they fumbled eight times. You know what? We talked to Ron Calcagni. The one thing he said is, I want to make sure that I don't have any fumbles. And when you see it, he just didn't get the handoff. You know what? You can't go bowling this early in the game. You can't fumble the ball this early in the game. You can't hurt yourself. If you want to win in Lincoln, Nebraska, you have to play close to mistake-free. Slot to the top, Bobby Newcomb to the near side. Now he comes in motion. And they give to Alexander maybe a yard. Let's check the game plan for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Keith? You know, the one thing that they want to do, they want to make sure this running backs run. They want to make sure they get a 100-yard running back either out of the two that they have that are playing today. And another thing they need to do is they need to rattle these young bucks. They got to put some pressure on B.J. Tiger, and they got to put some pressure on Ben Boyne to make sure they don't get comfortable and keep getting those gifts. They had so many turnovers coming into this game. If they can keep getting those turnovers the way Julius Jackson has been getting them, it's going to be great for Nebraska. Willie Miller and Dan Alexander in the eye. They're going to run over Ertz. Here's Newcomb with a blocker. And he's knocked out of bounds after a pickup of nine. Should be enough for a first down. Alvin Porter bounced him out. When you have a player as tough and as quick and as explosive as Bobby Newcomb, you've got to use him in every way you can. Here he is right here. When he goes in motion, I told you he's dangerous, and he comes back around and gets the handoff. You've got to create a way of getting it to him. A great block out front, running down the field, and he picks up positive yards. He's a guy they want to keep getting the ball to. It makes sense. Alexander, oh man, he takes a lick right at the 40-yard line. Good hit. Let's take a look as Kevin Williams is the last to get up. He's the one who made good contact. The Cowboys game plan, Keith? Well, don't hurt yourself. They've already started off, already had a fumble. You can't fumble and you can't have penalties and you can't throw interception when you're in Lincoln, Nebraska. Keep your horses rested. Keep your defense on the sideline so they can get rested. They can make some big plays for you. Force Krause to throw the ball. He has to put the ball in there because he's dangerous running. No gain on the play. It'll be second and ten. Crouch all kinds of time, and he throws high, trying to get it to Wistrom. That ball seemed like it got away from him. He did a great job last week throwing the ball against Missouri, placing the ball, stepping into the ball early in the game. You watch him. He has to be able to throw the ball early in the game. He has to get, on, get comfortable, get into the role of being that quarterback, stepping into his pass. That's the things he's got to do. He's forced that ball a little bit. It looked like it slipped away from him a little bit, too. Third down and 10 now. They need the 30-yard line. Alexander, the single setback. Crouch complete. First down yardage to the 29-yard line. It's Sean Applegate, the senior from right here in Lincoln. Boy, when you have that kind of time, Keith, you ought to find somebody open. You know, we were doing a little film study yesterday, and we talked to Eric Crouch. He said, the one thing I will do is I'll stand in the pocket. And he stood in the pocket a long time before he found Applegate out there in the open field, and that's a great move by Applegate. Now, he wants to go to Newcomb at first. Newcomb takes him on the post, give a great outside move, but he's covered great by Alvin Porter. So he has to find a second receiver, and he came back to Applegate and found Applegate. Now they got to measure and see if they got a first down. They have enough. The drive marches on. Frank Solich in his second year after 36 years of 
Bob Devaney, the late Bob Devaney, and Dr. Tom Osborne. You know, there's a, there's a lot of jobs it's easy to come in and be the head coach. Well, it's never easy, but replacing, uh, coming after two legends is not an easy task. Crouch follows Willie Miller, and he'll dive ahead for eight. Somebody was on the face mask. Oh. They'll tack a few more yards onto this carry. Looked like somebody grabbed his face. You can see his head. It just jerked around a little bit. The one thing that Krause can do for you is he doesn't take his option all the way outside like most quarterbacks. If he sees a gap, he explodes through it. Terry Turlington, our referee today, indicating the face mask. Krause takes this ball. He's supposed to go all the way outside, but there's a big hole right there, and he explodes through the hole, and there's the face mask to pull around the face. Most option quarterbacks like to get the ball outside so they have the option to pitch it to their backs. But Crouch, when he sees a hole, he explodes through it. J.B. Flowers, the man who grabbed the face mask. Crouch, when he runs it, nearly five yards a carry. He's explosive. You were remarking yesterday when we were watching film that he, when he's in the open field, he runs like a track sprinter. You know what? We talked about that a little bit. When he gets in open field, he drops the hammer. It's a running technique called dropping the hammer, and that's exactly the way he runs. And they teach that in track. <laughs> Willie Miller with the football. And the fullback gets five or six on the quick hitter. Nebraska in the red zone. Traditionally outstanding. And this year, 17 opportunities, 11 touchdowns, 10 of them on the ground. Well, you know exactly how they want to score. That's Nebraska football. We're going to run that ball into the end zone. They can get a first down inside the two. Alexander does well to hold on to the football on the pitch. Evan Howell took his legs out, so it'll be third down in a couple, and four yards for the touchdown. Defensively, no touchdowns allowed by this Oklahoma State defense in goal-to-go situations. 94 in there is Jaquay Thomas. He's had a good start to his career, the junior college transfer. Northeastern Oklahoma A&M. Crouch, touchdown! Took advantage of the turnover, and they move it 50 yards. I tell you what, Nathan Simmons probably feeling bad because that was his fumble that, that occurred, and Nebraska is great at taking those turnovers and making points out of it. Josh Brown to attempt the extra point. And the sidewinder boots it through, 7 to nothing. With 9.36 to go in the opening quarter. In front of another packed house in Lincoln. Eric Crouch from four yards away puts Nebraska on top, 7 to nothing. They were stopped their initial possession, but then they picked up the fumble and they go 51 yards in nine plays. Dan Hagenfeld, the punter, also is the kickoff man. That's Jamal Fobbs. And Fobbs will get a chance. And he scoots out at the 20-yard line. Let's pick up the touchdown again on the option. Krause does a great job of getting up in there. He's a running back at quarterback, but if you look at Willie Miller, 6'1", 245 pounds, leading up in there, he's in the end zone by the time that Krause get touched. I tell you what, they talk about pancakes. Watch Adam Jones. He takes the guy to the ground. That's a pancake, and they take pride in that here at Oklahoma, at Norm, I mean, at Nebraska. Almost messed up and said Oklahoma. Hey, you're lucky they allowed you into town. Don't mention Norman here. <laughs> Oh, 
Simmons ahead for about three or four. Chris Kelsey made the tackle. There's our Buick scoring drive. Nine plays, 51 yards, a little less than three and a half minutes. The amazing thing about that fumble, they had an off week, Oklahoma State, after their loss at Mississippi State, where they had six turnovers and eight fumbles, five of which they lost. All they worked on was ball security and fundamentals. Straight ahead again for a couple of yards. That's Jeremy Hafferty. It'll set up third down and four. There's the Southwestern Bell Wireless defensive line. Steve Warren is really coming on for Nebraska at the linebacker level. Julius Jackson has three interceptions already this year and a couple of fumble recoveries. He scored twice against Southern Miss. Mike Brown is as good a defensive back as they've ever had here. Tall statement, but he gets it done. Here's the delay. Simmons won't get near the 30. Carlos Pope, the middle backer, 13. And also Tony Ortiz, number 37, to stuff it. When you look at Carlos Pope, he's wearing 250 pounds. He's a junior. He's a big inside guy. I asked Charlie McBride, I said, Charlie, can he cover at 250 pounds? He, has, he, he said he has great feet. He can cover also. Scott Elder will punt. Theo Craver and Bobby Newcomb back deep. This is a short punt, and it takes a Nebraska hop. A big-time Nebraska hop. So the Huskers will have another short field to work. They'll have it at the plus 49 when we come back to Lincoln. year truly a game to remember with the score tied at 17 midway through the fourth quarter Nebraska's Joe Walker races 73 yards on a punt return to put the Huskers ahead 24-17 but the Cowboys charge back setting up a chance to tie they have three seconds to snap the ball for the win no Nebraska stops them that was last year and this year, the game in Lincoln, Nebraska. Last year, they played at a neutral site. They had 78,000 at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. This year, it's a sea of red. First time the Cowboys have been here since 1994. Crouch gets it away. Got a man, Wistrom, to the two. Flowers saved the touchdown. from Webb City, Missouri. When you watch Crouch, he goes through his, he, you know, he takes that handoff, and that makes the defense bite up. The safety comes up because they've been running the ball so well, and Winstrom is right behind him and catches the ball. He's a big-time receiver. He's coming in after the Shandon Sheldon Jackson, who was a great receiver here. They think that he's going to be along that line of receivers to be able to catch the ball deep. They say he can block the ball, too. I mean, he can block at the line, uh, at the point of attack also. Terrell Buckhalter's in the deep eye. He's going to get the football, and he's going to take it in. Wistrom set it up. Play action hook up with Crouch. And Buckhalter takes it in. His second rushing touchdown of the year. And Josh Brown makes it 14 to nothing with 7.06 to go in the first quarter. the near side. Nebraska leading 14 to nothing. Terrell Buckhalter, over 130 yards rushing last week in the 40 to 10 win over Missouri. It gets in the end zone from a couple of yards away. Bob from the five. It open 
backs up a little bit, and Jamal twists to the 26-yard line. Well, when you watch Eric Crouch, he goes through his option. You know what? He goes through the first one, fake it to the fullback, and he brings it out. There's a bunch of blockers up in front of him, and that is easy pitching. He reads the defensive end and does a great job. Right here, the defensive end takes him. He pitches to Buck Holter, and he is in the end zone, untouched. Oklahoma State needs to respond. Got an unbalanced line at the top. They go to the weak side. Here's Simmons. And he'll get maybe two or three. Carlos Polk reacts quickly. The middle backer with help from Mike Brown, number 21. The scoring drive brought to you by Buick. Two plays, 49 yards. The big play, the crouch hookup with Grant Wistrom's little brother. Tracy Wistrom takes it 47 yards to the two. Simmons will get to about the 34-yard line, and that'll set up the third and two. And coming in, Ron Calcagney, the offensive coordinator for Oklahoma State, said, we want to be physical, we want to run right at him, and set up third and short. You know what? When Ron Calcagney said that, he didn't think he was going to be down 14 points. He can't press. They've got to keep doing this. They've got to keep trying to get to the thirds and two the way they are now. He can't say we're so far behind. There's still a lot of time to play in the game. They're unbalanced to the top again. Simmons. Close, but I don't know if he got there. It is hard to make a living running between the tackles against Nebraska. I tell you what, it's hard to make a living running outside the tackles against Nebraska. They have so much team speed. Sometimes it looks like it's going to be a positive game, and all of a sudden these quick linebackers they have show up in only a two-yard game. Well, by the spot, I don't think they got enough. They did. DJ Tiger back into the football game. Down 14 to nothing on their own 35-yard line. They're going to go for it. He's sending a message here. And I believe he'll have the first down. There's no question he'll have it. You know when they walk up to the line of scrimmage, he walks up, and usually what they do is they pick the open hole when you're a quarterback, and you go for the open hole. It looked like B.J. Tiger took almost a whole step back, and then he went for it to go try to find a positive play there. He actually ended up going off his right guard, Adam Davis, which is usually a pretty good decision. You know, if you go off Adam Davis, you can't make a bad decision. You know, he's a guy, all, all Big 12, team captain type of guy that you're looking to make big plays for you. A counter to Simmons and again Polk number 13 is the first to arrive we're talking also about Aaron Nebraska Wills 81 defense. talking about this Nebraska defense I just said it looked like it was an open hole then all of a sudden it just closed up those linebackers do a great job of filling When you look back here and you see the ball come back to Simmons, there was a nice counter. It looks like an open hole there. And then all of a sudden, there, there's Polk. There's Willis. They're all up in there just stopping the play. Here's Jamal Fox. Nowhere to run. That's Shaw. Brian Shaw, the senior from DeWeese, Nebraska. Erase that play. It'll be third and nine. It is never easy to run against Nebraska. Look at this. Four teams, Iowa, Cal, Southern Miss, Missouri, all less than two and a half yards of carry. Missouri, point eight. Are you kidding me? Drew, that couldn't be good. No. <laughs> and, it, and it wasn't. What that was was the wrong end of 40 to 10. They need the 47-yard line. Tiger will be dropped at the 30. He escaped twice, but he couldn't escape Chris Kelsey. 
when you listen to Kirk Palmer, the quarterback for Missouri last week, he said these guys line up exactly what they're supposed to do. But I tell you one thing, they get there. I don't know how they do it. But when you watch it, it's great coverage. Great coverage. That's what you call a cover sack. He wants to throw it to somebody. Nobody's open. And then he goes and moves. Usually you can get a receiver open sometime during the play, but they couldn't get one. That's a coverage sack. Joe Walker back deep. Elder under pressure. It's blocked. Loose football. Nebraska will have it first and goal. Brian Shaw may have gotten the block. He came clean right up the gut. How many of those have we seen this year? a lot of blocks. People are talking about putting their best player on defense, and what they do is they just come in an all-out rush up the, and he's unblocked, and he gets it, rolls down, and then they try to pick up the ball and get in the end zone, but that's not a bad play on that. And he runs out there, and he tries to cover it. I tell you what, this Nebraska, everybody thinks big plays. He wants to pick the ball up and get into the end zone. That was a big play by Shaw, though. Colter and Willie Miller crouch to throw. End zone just out of the reach of John Gibson. That's that placement I was talking about. He did a great job of putting that ball where the receiver could only get it, where the defensive back couldn't get it. And that's what I was surprised about when I saw Eric Crouch and his throwing ability. He does a great job of putting that ball where only the receiver can get it. the first punt that Elders had blocked this year. Brian Shaw has Nebraska set up at the eight. But you're right, Keith. Everybody's had punts blocked this year. Crouch takes a look at the defense and calls a timeout. So it'll be second and goal. We had an opportunity to talk to Eric Crouch yesterday about a number of topics. And one of the things we talked about was the quarterback controversy and if he felt comfortable now as the number one guy. Yeah, I feel pretty good about it. You know, there's been a couple, uh, you know, times before where, you know, the position wasn't quite set or, uh, you know, you didn't know who was going to be playing and how much and what time you're going in into the game. So now I feel pretty comfortable with, with where I'm at. I know that, you know, it's, it's my offense now that, you know, I've got to do everything I can to try to get this team rolling and motivate them as, as much as possible. One of the interesting things last week when Crouch hooked up, Keith, with Bobby Newcomb from 53 yards away against Missouri. The first guy down the field to jump into Bobby Newcomb's arms was Eric Crouch. Well, maybe for a couple of reasons, he said, I want you to stay at wing back so I can stay the number one guy. That's a great thing. But you know, the one thing that he did was, is he wanted to get Bobby Newcomb in the game. He said that the week before, I want to get Bobby Newcomb a touchdown, and that's who he wanted to get the ball to. They are, they are great, great friends. And you know what? Bobby Newcomb made a sacrifice. He said, I want to make us a better team, and I believe I can do it at wingback. And Frank Solich, all the coaches, effusive in their praise of Eric Crouch and Bobby Newcomb, how well they handled the situation and what kind of character people they are. Davison in motion. Here's Buckhalter. How easy was that? That's option football to perfection. Well, I guarantee you one thing. This is not how Bob Simmons envisioned starting the football game. Brian Shaw made it all happen with the block punt. He's got his own cheering section. Tell you what, they've been doing a great job on the option so far. You know, we talked to Rob Ryan earlier in the week, and he said the thing that he wanted to do was to make sure that they went through their reads and made sure that they carried out the play. Brown's extra point is true, 21 to nothing. Well, Brian Shaw understood coming into today that he's a senior, and it was Brian Shaw day because Brian Shaw has never gotten anything but an A here in Lincoln, Nebraska. He has a 4-0 GPA. 
in animal science. He's a second-team academic All-American, three-time first-team academic All-Big 12 player, a former walk-on. It is Brian Shaw Day today at Memorial Stadium, and he thought it would be fitting to make a big play. Well, the one thing that people probably don't know about Brian Shaw is that he has a 36-inch vertical, and he can get up, and when he comes through there, he shows a little burst there. He just barely goes up and tips it and gets a great block, and he sets it up for his team. Brown does a great job. He's been running option all day. This is what you call a counter option. You get the defense, I mean, the linebackers off, off track, and he gets the pitch. Somebody did not get to pitch relation. There's an assignment for the quarterback, and there's an assignment for the back. Somebody did not get to the back, and it probably was caused, Drew, by the fact that he did a counter option. Probably was a linebacker got hung up on the counter option. Jamal Fobbs again from the five. And he's run out at the 34-yard line. Ralph Brown, the senior corner, got him at that point. Another Nebraska scoring drive brought to you by Buick. Just eight yards. Well, they had to go 51, 49, and eight. They're playing in half a football field, Keith. Yeah, it's tough, especially when you start getting turnovers. This is something that Coach Simmons talked about. We don't want to do that. We're getting back to basic, a little bit about what you talked about early, going back to basic, handling the ball well, making sure you do the things that help you win. Here's Fobbs. He's going to lose a bunch. Ralph Brown again making the tackle. They're going to lose about seven on that play. He started every game in his Nebraska career. The senior from Hacienda Heights, California. Today, number 43. With as much speed as Jamal Fobb has, I don't know if he has as much speed to outrun this defense. They do a great job of stringing him out and letting the guy on the outside make the tackle, Raph Brown. He does a little celebrating there, huh? showing blitz and the play clock's at zero that'll be second at 22 Oklahoma State going the wrong direction and Keith coming into this game they're an offense trying to find an identity with two young quarterbacks BJ Tiger and we'll also see Ben Bowling and when you're going against Charlie McBride's defense you can't be behind 21 nothing when you're still trying to find your way particularly here in Lincoln it's very difficult to catch up when you have a defense like this it's very difficult to stay ahead when you have a defense like this quarterback draw Tiger He'll get some of the yardage back out to the 32. It'll be third down and about 13. Julius Jackson, 50, covered him up. I think that was a great call by Ron Calcagney. What he wants to do is just try to get about half the yards back on second down, and then third down, try to go for the other half you've got to get. Well, you can have uh, the third-ranked defense in the country, but when you are being put up with uh, eight yards in front of you to try to keep the team out of the end zone, it's tough. And when you're constantly on the field, it's tough. Which means this offense for the Cowboys has to do something. And right now, they're going to call a timeout. You know, the sideline has got to do their job also. I think they had a player running in late in the game. You got a guy, he's uncomfortable in P.J. Tiger, and then you want him to be comfortable, then you got to make sure that everybody around him do his job. If he's not a veteran guy like you, you had in Tony Lindsay, you got to make sure everybody do their job. Well, next week on our Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week, Keith and I and Jim Knox, our entire crew, will be in Boulder, Colorado, where Ralphie will lead the Buffaloes along with Marcus Stiggers against the Vaughn Black and the Missouri Tigers. 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 Pacific, a little different time. That's Missouri at Folsom Field to take on the Colorado Golden Buffaloes. Here in Lincoln, 21 to nothing, Nebraska in the first quarter. Still has 109 left. Look at Correll Buckholzer. He probably says, you know what? It's easy scoring. I've gone in untouched. You know, this offense talking.
talking about going back to basic. And I said, Coach Simmons, what do you mean by basic? I said, do you mean by three-point holding the ball? He said, yeah, just tucking the ball away, three pressure points, just going back to old high school football. And that's what he's tried to do, but they hadn't seen, I hadn't seen any positive out of all that. Well, not yet. And your game plan may be thrown out the window down by three touchdowns early. Complete. It'll be fourth down. They were trying to get it to Terrence Richardson. And number three, Keel Craver had the good coverage. There's Craver, the sophomore. Well, they wanted to be physical. That's how they had success last year with Nebraska. But you can be physical all you want when it's a tight football game. All of a sudden, down 21 nothing makes it real difficult. Joe Walker back pedals to the 20. And he'll get to the 28 yard line. Let's take a look at our sleep in first quarter numbers. Nebraska with 111 yards. Oklahoma State with 12. That's about all you need to know. <laughs> that says a lot uh, when you only have 12 yards. This game has been dominated so far by Nebraska. Nebraska has done all the things that Bob Simmons, the coach over in, 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 with the Cowboys, has said that he wanted his team to do. And that's why they're so successful. And you saw the one turnover. It's really two with the block punt. thing about these backs they're big strong backs and what they can do is they can pound it up in here when you watch Buckholzer you try to wonder how does he get through that hole he just keeps his feet moving and pounding and grinding and, they, and that's the thing that they can do I mean Nebraska has some great home run backs but these guys are some power backs he actually got nine second and one Willie Miller big opening over the 50 to the 48. He just flat ran over Evan Howell. This offensive line, Nebraska, take pride in opening up holes and getting pancakes. And there's a big open hole in there, and Willie Miller just runs through it. And instead of throwing a move, he just Powell drives over Evan Howell. He got 13 yards, and that'll be the final snap of the first quarter. To say it was dominated by Nebraska would be a grand understatement. 21 nothing Huskers. nothing Nebraska in front of close to 78,000 the 230th consecutive sellout at Memorial Stadium this is the second largest crowd ever in Memorial Stadium history they've expanded it by a couple of thousand folks from last year 36 million dollar new press facility with 42 sky boxes in place plus the increase in attendance here's Buckhalter and he lost his footing at the 50-yard line let's check in with Jim Knox Knoxie all right Drew I'll tell you what's hurting Oklahoma State today it has to be the loss of linebacker Keanu Wright he broke his hand in the game against Mississippi State now I talked to Keanu he told me he felt his hand hurting in the second quarter he just thought it was bruised he played the rest of the game with a broken hand right now has four screws in it Keanu Wright definitely a tough guy but right now he's on the bench this afternoon watching he tell you what he's important and the reason why he's important he gets to change you see a different formation he can change the formation for him Crouch gets it away Frankie London pulls it in a one-time quarterback here at Nebraska Alvin Porter pulls him down the possessions today for Nebraska the first time they had it they were forced to punt three and out but on the first play for Oklahoma State, they fumbled in the next three possessions. What Frank Solis likes to see. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown on the next three possessions. I tell you what, everybody kind of criticizes the Nebraska team. All I've seen is great stuff against a great defense, especially this offense is doing a great job for Nebraska. Third down and six. Blitz coming. Crouch gets it away. Good defensive play. That was Howell closing on Sean Applegate. And Evan Howell broke it up. And the Huskers will 
off the punt. In the past, when you look at Nebraska, they always depended on that big play where they fake in there, and then they, they had a guy wide open downfield. Eric Crouch allows you the ability to be able to throw the ball. That was just excellent coverage by Howe. He did a terrific job of coming up on there. He's a great cover guy. And after an open week, their record really not stellar in the 90s. And I don't care. I don't think Nebraska is a team you want to play any time, even if it's after an open date or before an open date. You have a year to prepare for Nebraska, and it's not enough. Counter, Fox, trying to get wide. He's got the corner. And he's run out of bounds at the 30-yard line, a first down. That's where they like to get Jamal Fobbs to the corner because he's, he's got the extra gear. Well, he can switch gears on you. He can take off. They try to run a counter here. They're trying to get him off tack. They can't go up the middle. They hadn't had success, so they try to get outside. And you see big old Adam leading him on the outside. And that was a great move by him. And that was a rare missed tackle by Mike Brown there. And he gets on around the corner. Kevin Brown, and he gets just a couple of yards. Kevin Brown is a pretty good runner at fullback. I'm surprised they don't put him up in there a little bit more. 
let him pound up in there, soften it up a little bit for Simmons and Fobb so they can hit it up in there. When you look at him, he was a guy that had a little trouble with his weight. And I don't mean to be picking in this business, but I read where he got married. And I know when I got married, I gained a lot of weight. <laughs> and your wife's a little upset with how much fried food you eat, isn't she? <laughs> oh, I'll be quiet. <laughs> Much doing on second down. Jamal Fobbs on the right side for maybe a yard. You know, in your original game plan, you want to run the ball on first down, run it on second down, show them how tough you are. But when you look at the scoreboard now, down 21-0, to zero, you're in Lincoln, Nebraska. You got to start thinking, I need to get the ball to Richardson, I need to get the ball to Howell, so they can make some big plays to get us back in the game. Third and seven for Bowling here. Complete. Good coverage by Craver on Ethan Howell. So Oklahoma State will have to punt. About the only thing they were able to accomplish there is not getting a safety and at least getting some room. Well, they still got to their punter. They still got to get the punt off. They had, had a little trouble with that earlier today. But you know what? There are some positives in there to grow on a little bit. They got the ball outside of a speed defense. Pressure coming, Elder gets it away. Good punt. Walker backs up to his 27. And a flag comes in, and that could have been a violation of the halo. Yeah, I think that's that old halo rule. I think he got a little close. But you know, sometimes what happens, they get pushed in the back. They don't want to get that close to the guy. They get shoved in the back. Well, that's what it was. It was the shove in the back, which would have violated the halo. So the official's on top of it. And the punt of 40 yards by Scott Elder. Interference with the opportunity to catch the kid. Five yards penalty. First down. Oh, excuse me. So it, it is a penalty against Oklahoma State. It was the halo infraction and not the block in the back. We'll step aside. 21-0 Nebraska. The results are in, and it's official. For the fourth year running. Nebraska leading Oklahoma State 21 to nothing. Eric Crouch has been in the end zone today. Let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper Big 12 Conference leaders, pass efficiency leaders. Josh Heupel having a great year. Then Crouch, number two. Mike Machete from Colorado. We'll see him next week against the Missouri Tigers. Goodman, Keith Jackson, Jim Knox from Lincoln, 10.31 to go in the first half. And that'll be a loss on the play. Alexander gobbled up almost immediately by Courtney Mallory, the 290-pound senior defensive tackle from Detroit. Coming up later in the game, we will select our BMW play of the game. I tell you what, Mallory did a great job of exploding through the line and make something happen. This defense is what Oklahoma State depends on. They've got to come up with a, a turnover or a big play. They might have to score. Here's Alexander with room. And he's tripped up after a pickup of about 14. When he gets his shoulders square, he's not a guy you want to tackle. You know what Coach Frank Soli said that yesterday? He said he may not be the fastest guy on the team, but when he hits you, you know you've been hit. They do a great job. This all starts with the quarterback and with a great read. Somebody did not get out there to make a tackle. He gets those shoulders upfield, and really nobody wants to make that tackle. He's a big, strong guy, a guy that ran a 4.68 last year, uh, gain weight, and took his 40 town, 40 time down to a 4.53. So that's impressive. Well, it's scary because he weighs close to 250 pounds, and he has 4% body fat. You know, guys like that, cold weather is great for them. Because in hot weather, when you have that low percentage of body fat, that big, they normally cramp up. So he must love being in Lincoln, Nebraska today. 
It was cool. We were talking about that uh, on the drive over the stadium today. This is one of those days where you might get a little shy in the secondary because every time your hands hit that hard plastic on the helmet or the shoulder pads, it stings for about a month. And when you have guys like Bugholter and, and Alexander that weigh a lot and bring the heat, yeah, you might not want to tackle them. But this is Oklahoma State, and they're coached by Rob Ryan, and I know that they want to lay some leather. Third down and in inches. Crouch takes it himself, first down. You know, we talked about Crouch early in the day. He ha he's matched up against Rob Ryan defense. He has a lot of confidence. And when you sit, when they told him, you're the guy, Bobby Newcomb's going to play wing back, you know, he has utmost confidence now because he knows that if I make a bad play, they're not going to snatch me for the game. This is my team. Yeah, he definitely is carrying himself that way. And Bobby Newcomb's already had a couple of carries in this game, so they're getting him involved. Here comes a reverse to Newcomb on cue. Crouch out there to block for him. And Bobby Newcomb will get it inside the 35 to the 34, and there might have been a late hit. At the start of the year, Bobby Newcomb, in a very close battle, was named the starting quarterback over Eric Crouch. Crouch was disappointed, very disappointed, as you might expect, but he pointed out that he never thought about leaving the team, contrary to what some people said on talk shows in Nebraska, and some people wrote, Eric Crouch said, I never contemplated leaving. What about the unselfishness of these two guys? You look at you look at Newcomb. He wants to make this team a better team, and that's what he said. They're putting the best 11 players on the field. When you have Newcomb at wing back and watch the day he's having so far, they've got the best guys on the field. Now Newcomb is still taking snaps at quarterback. If anything happens to Crouch, he will move back and play for quarterback. He's not listed number two on the depth chart. Jeff Perino is, but if Crouch were to go down in a close football game or for extended period, Bobby Newcomb would be back under center. On the option, Alexander gets a couple before J.B. Flowers grabs him up around the shoulders. That's 58 Kevin Williams. He was around the football as well. The Richard freshman from Arkansas. You know that state a little bit. Oh, Fordyce, Arkansas, an outstanding basketball player who I hear Eddie Sutton is talking to him in his ear, saying you ought to come out and play a little post position for me. They've been pleasantly, pleasantly surprised with his play so far. He does a great job on that corner coming off. He he really be spectacular against passing teams because he's a great rusher. Second and nine. Oh, that was a dangerous throw. Evan Howell nearly had the pick. You know, we were talking about Oklahoma State maybe needing to score defensively. They would have had their chance right there. You know what? Evan Howell is a guy that can cover and he can run. If he didn't trap that ball, nobody would have caught him. But the thing that they wanted to do was they wanted to know where Bobby Newcomb was at all times. And so they were going to cover him. They didn't put a special defense in, but they wanted to know where he was. So they knew where he was. Evan, Evan Howell stepped in front of the ball and couldn't catch it and couldn't take it to the house. A flag came in late. And it'll be a procedure penalty against Nebraska. You know, we were interviewing Rob Ryan, and he said that any time that Bobby Newcomb comes into the game, they want to be aware of him. They're not going to put in a special package to stop him, but they want to be aware Illegal of him in the game. Decline, start down. And so far, they probably know where he is, but they just can't catch him. <laughs> Third down and nine. 21 to nothing, Nebraska. And another whistle. The timeout indicated by Oklahoma State. 7.58 to go in the first half. 
back in Lincoln, Nebraska. Second quarter, Nebraska all over Oklahoma State, 21 to nothing. And a reminder for you Big 12 sports fans, don't forget to keep up with your favorite team. All you have to do is log on to Big12Sports.com for the latest. Interesting vote this week. They asked you to vote on the toughest football stadium to play in in the Big 12. I'm sure Keith Jackson and Drew will be casting their vote after this game, guys. Well, I'll tell you what, Jim. I know Keith Jackson will tell you one of the toughest places to play anywhere in college football is right here. I tell you what, this is a tough place to play, but I'm going to tell you something, Drew. These are some of the nicest fans that you will ever meet away from home. They are very respectful, very knowledgeable. Third and nine, option, Buck Holter with room. He'll have the first down and more inside the 10-yard line. Whoa, I might have spoken too quickly. They're going to mark him out around the nine and a half. It's going to be very close. That's why you heard some of the boos in the background. Looked like he had enough initially. We know that Couch is going through his reads. He's doing a great job of that. He gets to have to pitch the ball. But watch the receiver up here. That looks like Davidson up there getting a great block to help Boko to get to at least a close to a first down. But it looks like it's going to be fourth down. It's going to be fourth down and short. And I don't know. Flag flew. This one won't count. Had it counted, though, I don't think Crouch got anything. Well, I tell you one thing, he doesn't have the biggest body. He's not a real big guy at, you know, six foot one, 195 pounds. Fourth ball, ball start on the offense. Fourth down. No, he doesn't. Now you have a different deal. It's fourth and six. And I imagine Frank Solich will bring the field goal unit out. So Josh Brown will come into the game. You know, as well as they're playing today, you look at Frank Solich's face, he's a little upset about that. He wanted another touchdown. It's still early. One never knows. 31 yards away from the far hash. And now movement again. And if this is on the defense... They get the five yards back, and Frank Solich would have another decision. Dead ball. Ball start uh -huh. on the offense. Five-yard penalty. That's just making it a little more difficult for old Josh Brown. I don't know if the fans like that call too much. Well, Josh is probably saying, you know what? I could withstand about four more of those penalties before it gets a little uncomfortable. <laughs> He's a great kicker. He can put the ball through, and this is great practice for him. will be a 36-yarder now. London has it down. And the kick is through. So Nebraska extends their lead to 24 to nothing. Their offense has been very good, and their defense has been very good. You know, coming in here, you talk about this defense. They've been a little upset because everybody's talking about Oklahoma State's defense, and they didn't feel like they got the respect that they needed. They do a great job of running the ball down, and I said it once before, they look like they're going to have positive plays, and they just close the door on you. They've been doing a fantastic job of front all day long with those, with those linebackers who can run. I mean, they have linebackers who run, but they're, they're surprisingly, their down linemen have been the guys that they're really happy about because when you have two big guys in the middle, namely Steve Warren. You can stop that run and make people run outside. That's where the speed of your linebackers come in, and they've been happy with Steve Warren, who I hear can sing a little bit like Barry White. You've been snooping around? Uh, well, I wanted to hear him a little bit yesterday. I didn't get a chance. Little Barry White, huh? Well, you just got to imagine a guy that weighs 300 pounds has to sing like Barry White. <laughs> didn't get far. Let's check in with Jim Knox. Hey, Drew, i got to show you this. Check out the new field here at Memorial Stadium. You got the natural, the grass underneath. You got the recycled 
tires. That's right, 13,000 recycled Nebraska tires. Now, this will cause a little problem on opposing teams. They're not exactly sure on which kind of shoe to bring. Oklahoma State, they brought the cleats. They also brought the short cleats. They also brought the natural turf cleats. They don't know what to do. 280 pair of cleats. Oklahoma State, hey, they don't know what to do out there. <laughs> Here's Simmons to the 20. Hey, Jim, save a pair of 10 and a half, and uh, Keith needs a pair of 15. He's got big boats. Hey, we all went 13, so we had a great time out on that field yesterday. We had an opportunity to run on the field, and we had on playing tennis shoes, and we were making nice cuts. I want to let everybody know, Drew, you have a nice arm. You could have been a quarterback. Well, it's, a, it's that artificial surface, Keith. <laughs> and, uh... But it's funny. It feels like grass. Simmons with an opening to the 32. Here's a Buick scoring drive for Nebraska. They come away with three points from Josh Brown. He plays 46 yards. Big play, Bobby Newcomb had a 20-yard run. You know, six minutes left to go in the quarter. I think they finally figured out what they exactly they want to do at the beginning of the game to run the ball for positive yards on first down, positive yards on second down. That was a great series of plays for Oklahoma State. Can they sustain it? Bowling remains the quarterback. And there was contact on the out and up move at the 40-yard line, Ethan Howell said, hey, I was interfered with. Well, I'm an old receiver, but I sure believe that was interference myself. He gave him a nice stop. You cannot run in front of a receiver like that and stop him from going on his route, and that's exactly what happened on that play. The man who had the collision was Keel Craver. They say, believe it or not, as great as Ralph Brown has been, they say Craver has better talent. Second and 10. Simmons, pretty good move before Ralph Brown hit him low and knocked him down. I tell you what, that offensive line looked like they're stepping up and they're taking a challenge and they're opening holes up front. And that is a positive game once again. That's a positive game. They got to start getting a positive and try to inch back into this game. Yeah, I mean, their MO is not to drop back 30 or 40 times a game. They want to be a physical football team. But it's tough when you're in a 24-point hole. Nebraska stayed at home on the waggle, didn't they? I tell you what, they did a great job. Bowling went through his read, but you want to know something? They they put a lot of pressure on you on this defense. He goes and he gives a nice fake. Now he's trying to come around. They're trying to keep sneak Kevin Brown out of the backfield, but you know what? Willick does a great job of reading it and putting pressure on him. He hang, he hung off him a little bit, and another guy, Julius Jackson, was covering Brown so he couldn't get the ball off. Joe Walker back. No fair catch for Mr. Walker. And he's erased. It's right where he caught it at the 34-yard line. And let's pay a visit to Jim Knox. Nim. All right, thanks, Drew. Coming up on the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report, we got a good one. Keith Jackson's coaching tips. Keith does a little jamming with the defensive secondary here at Nebraska. Also look back at some big plays in the Big 12 and look ahead to other Big 12 actions set for later today, including a preview on tonight's Texas Tech, Texas Tech, Texas A&M game. That's coming your way on the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report, Drew. All right, Jim, thank you. Miller and Carell Buckhalter. Late pitch, Buckhalter. He stepped out of bounds. At the 44-yard line, he stepped out. But I'll tell you what, the big man showed he can run. He showed he had some speed. And I will tell you something. The, 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 the sideline is your 12th man. They call the sideline your 12th man, and that 12th man came into play then. They do a great job of pitching the ball out, and then he's straightened up. He's ready to get out here, and he's running down the sideline, but there's that 12th man coming in right there. And he really had no reason to step out of bounds. He had enough room, but I tell you what, he was excited to get in that open field. They hadn't seen open field like that in a little while. 22 yards on the advance. 
The Oklahoma State defense, Keith, has to be getting fatigued. Well, the one thing about it is, is when you look at that defense, you're missing a big component in Kenyatta Wright. Willie Miller. Here's Miller trying to sprint into the secondary, knocking people over to the 25. That is vintage Nebraska football. They're running that inside trap to the fullback and doing a great job. You ask Frank Solis, you say, hey, can this guy run the ball? Is he just a blocker? And he said he's an outstanding runner up in the middle. They run that little trap inside and get a big hole in there, but he breaks a tackle right there. When you look how strong he is, he pulled away. Here's a guy that's come back from a couple of injuries, that abdominal muscle, had a growing muscle pull, but you can tell right there on that play. He got 19. Crouch cutting it back. He was one step away, perhaps. Does he have the vision of a running back? I know this is a running offense, and you say, well, he's a quarterback, but, but he has the vision. It was a hole, and he saw it. He was getting ready to change gears and get to the end zone. That was a saving tackle. Well, Frank Solich was saying yesterday, either Crouch or Newcomb would make great eye backs. I wouldn't mind seeing Newcomb back there, dotting that eye. I imagine he wouldn't mind dotting that eye either. A few more touches. Buckhalter and a good job that time by 91 Chris Tyler, the sophomore from Colleen, Texas. The one thing about Bobby Newcomb is he's only six foot, 195 pounds. And the one thing that Frank Sosa said yesterday was the fact that he didn't know if he could take the pounding from that eye back spot all year long being in the Big 12 Conference because this is a tough defensive conference. It's a run conference. So your alma mater's kind of changed that a little bit, huh? You know, I wish I had the opportunity to play tight end down there right now. You add up all the catches you had in four years, you get it in four games. Crouch. Dwayne Levels knocked him down at the 16-yard line. But the thing about Crouch, you got to respect is he's a physical runner. Remember that run against Iowa where he knocked the guy over at the seven-yard line? Well, the one thing Crouch is is that he's not scared of anybody. He runs his counter option up here, and he knows where he wants to get. He's trying to get to the sticks. And you don't find a 6'195 195-pound quarterback that wants to throw his shoulder in there to get to the quarterback, I mean, get to the first down. Well, he was about a yard shy, but Frank Solich will go. Bobby Newcomb brought the play in. And Newcomb comes to the near side. Crouch keeps. Crouch has a first down. Great read. I'm going to tell you something. He does a great job. When you see him come down the line, he comes down the line, and he plants, and he heads north and south real hard and real fast. You look at him as he comes down the line of scrimmage, and now he sees a little hole, and he takes that plant right there and make Nalls miss him. Nalls had a clear tackle, but the way that he had the ability to plant and turn north and south, and that's the reason why he had a positive play. First and 10 from the 13. defense this time. You know, I was wondering earlier in the game why they weren't getting out there to the pitch relation. The offensive line of Nebraska has been doing a terrific job of cutting people down. That's why they're not getting there. Guys who would normally get there and make plays, they're doing a great job of a scoop blocking and getting there and cutting people down. And Buckholter has been one of the guys who's, who's benefiting from this most of all because when you see Krauss get to the corner and the last guy takes him, man, Buckholter has run into the end zone untouched. I probably could score. You look pretty good yesterday running around. <laughs> Option pass, Crouch, got a man, touchdown, it's Wistrom. <laughs> Wistrom having a big day. Third catch. touchdown of the year for the sophomore from Webb City, Missouri. 
You know, he's majored in secondary education and mathematics. Josh Brown makes it 31 to nothing. And he's a guy, he's a guy that, you know, you say, you're not going to be a teacher after you finish at Nebraska. You got a date with the NFL. He does a great job, but what sets this play up is the play fake of, of Crouch. He does a great job, then he bags up, and he runs a great route. You don't see it, but at the top of his route, he gets a great move, and he's wide open. He has the ability to run, and he catches the touchdown. He's their go-to receiver. When you look at the Bates, what he does, he's a great blocker, but he's their go-to receiver at tight end. outstanding students that speaks a lot for the university when you see brothers coming after brother after brother that says that you have a great institution and a great coaching staff that's what that says because sometimes you have uh, somebody who's done one of your brothers wrong and you don't want to go there but you see a lot of that at Nebraska yeah, it's really amazing how many brothers have uh, followed in the footsteps of uh, older siblings Jamal Fobb, seven yards deep, will put a knee down. 31 to nothing. Nebraska with 110 to play in the first half. Eric Crouch has run that offense to perfection. And you know, this year Nebraska's had two big days on the ground against Iowa and Missouri last week. In two days that they kind of sputtered offensively against Cal and Southern Miss. And Obviously, those two schools had something to do with that. But Nebraska looks like they're starting to get it gear offensively. Well, I think they were a team trying to find themselves. You know, you got you really don't have a home run back, but you got two sturdy pounding backs. And I think they're starting to find out where they fit in. Bowling remains at quarterback. They give to Nathan Simmons. And he gets about a yard or two. Chris Kelsey with the tackle. Brian Shaw also around there, 46. Let's take a look. Uh, we have a flag, but we'll sort that out in a moment. Let's check out our national car rental game summary thus far. penalty. Illegal shift on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. First and 15. Here is our national car rental game summary. Oklahoma State did a great job to start the game. Three and out for Nebraska. They get the football at midfield. Great field position. But on the first play, a fump, really a, just a fumbled exchange between B.J. Tiger and Nathan Simmons, and then Nebraska got on a roll. Bowling, trying to get it on the fade route to Howell, but good coverage there. You know, the guy that's covering is Ralph Brown. If you're going to pick on any guy, I know Keel Craver is a great cover guy. He has a lot of athletic ability, but Ralph Brown is not the guy. You know, he's the All-American candidate. He's the guy that, that does a great job on the bump and run. And when you see the halftime special, he was the one that was demonstrating how you get a jam, and he used it out there just then. He's another guy that's uh, going to continue his career when he's done in Lincoln. to get up. 91 also in there is Lauren Kaiser. As Nathan Simmons has not found a lot of room to run. Last year, 116 yards against Nebraska. In fact, Nebraska had more yards in total offense and plenty more time in possession, in time of possession against the Huskers. But in the end, it was the Huskers with seven more points. Yeah, you know, that, that they always talk about you want the time of possession, you want the yardage, and Oklahoma State did a great job of that last year, but it really counts at the end of the game when you look at the scoreboard, and they are looking at the scoreboard, so they've got to start pressing right now a little bit. They've got to get the ball to guys like Marcellus Rivers. They've got to try to get the ball to Ethan Howell. I feel sorry for Ethan Howell. This is the second, second time in a row against uh, Mississippi State.
great. He played against the All-American candidate and Robert Bean. Now he's playing against Ralph Brown. You know, he's, he's went up against the tough competitors, and it's not fair that he doesn't have his main quarterback, Tony Lindsay. There's Bob Simmons, and there is the aforementioned Tony Lindsay. Tony's getting better. He was out throwing earlier this week, but the arm isn't the problem. It's the knee, and, and Tony's not just a pure drop-back quarterback. Tony's a guy that's got to move, so that knee's got to be at least 90% before he can be back in there. They think maybe late October. Third and 13. Bowling just eaten up. He never had a chance. Julius Jackson came off the edge. He's becoming a big playmaker. You know, there's certain people that you can run shuffle passes against, and there's certain people you can't. I think Ben Boylan was going back for a shuffle pass right here, but he didn't realize the speed of these linebackers in Nebraska, and Julius Jackson just exploded. He's got Nathan, coming up, Nathan Smith coming up underneath, but Julius Jackson gets there before the play can even start. And Nebraska called a timeout because they want to force the punt with 27 seconds left might come after another one. Reminder coming up at halftime with Sonic. America's drive-in halftime report with Jim Knox. We'll check some scores from around the Big 12 and we'll get another tip as we talked about from Keith Jackson. Hey, I, I only know a couple of things about the game. That's everything, I guess, Drew. But when you look at a guy like Crouch and then you look at the flip side, you look at Ben Bowling who's having a tough time. Ron Calcagna told us a great story about him being in the movie theater before Tony Lizzie getting hurt and Ben Bowling Bowling came in and tapped him on his back and said, Coach, I want to play. Well, you get an opportunity to play, but you might be playing against the wrong team at the wrong time. It's not a lot of fun to come to Lincoln, Nebraska if you're an opponent. Only three teams have won here in the last 11 years. Here's the heat. And Elder gets it away. Barely. The field position will be outstanding. Oklahoma State down to the 35, 12 seconds left. So maybe a play and a field goal attempt is probably what's on the mind of Frank Solich, who doubles as the head coach and offensive coordinator. That was a great call. That was a great call that time to get set up position. He figured he can get some more points before going in at halftime. And if you're looking for an offensive coordinator, you better look at the head coach because there's not one. He's the guy who's going to call all the plays. On it, just 24 yards. Here's a quick throw, and Applegate will get it to the 21, and they'll call timeout with three seconds to play. No, they don't have any. Uh, let me correct something. They're out of timeouts. I thought they had one left. But on the reset, there's the spike, and there's one second. We thought Nebraska had one timeout left. They were out of them. But Crouch executes it. One of the benefits of college football is the clock stops after every first down. Then you have the old kill play. They used to, a long time ago, they used to take the ball and they used to throw it out of bounds. Now they're just taking it, throw it forward into the ground, and that's what he did to stop the clock then so they have a chance to kick the field goal. Frankie London will hold. It'll be straight on, 39 yards away. And Josh Brown is a perfect three of three this year. to draw, boink, and hit the upright. So Nebraska will have to be content with a 31 to nothing lead. They've done everything right in the first half. Crouch has had a big day offensively. Now, the only thing that hasn't gone their way has been this 39-yard attempt. The reaction of Frank Solich on the missed kick. Coaches want all the points they can get. 31-0 at the break in front of another sellout in Lincoln. It's been all Huskers. Welcome to the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report. Back inside Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, Cornhuskers taking a big bite out of the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. 31-0 as we have hit intermission. And hi again, everyone. I am Jim Knox. And time to kick off our Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report with Keith's coaching tips. Today, Keith Jackson does a little jamming with a couple of Nebraska defensive backs. We're here.
here in Lincoln, Nebraska, and my coach's tip today is going to involve two All-American candidates, Ralph Brown and Mike Brown. And since Ralph is the best jammer of the two, I'm going to use him as the defensive back of choice. And then Mike over here is going to be my receiver. What I want to talk about today in coaching tip is the jam that you have to do on a wide receiver. Now, when you're jamming, the first jam I want to show Ralph is the fact that the receiver's trying to get off the ball and you take a hard jam. When you do that, the receiver try to release, Mike try to release, and he gets two hands. See the two-handed jam? Get the, ball, the, the hands right up here in the chest. The second jam that you try to do is a jam just to disrupt the receiver to make sure the quarterback timing is not on time. Now, this is the way when you try to get a release, Mike, Mike try to release again. Ralph is going to use one hand. That stops the receiver from getting off the line, and it stops the quarterback from having a great timing. Now, guys, if you miss the jam, you know you might be burnt toast. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought that was good. What was, what was wrong with that? It was funny. Hey! It was funny. <laughs> Gee, that just guess they don't like Sooners up there in Nebraska. When we return on the Sonic America's Drive and Halftime Report, we'll take a look back at some outstanding plays in the Big 12. Halftime in Oklahoma State trails Nebraska 31 to nothing. Time in Lincoln, Nebraska, and the Cornhuskers leading Oklahoma State at intermission 31 to nothing. And welcome back to the Sonic America's Drive In Halftime Report. A number of terrific plays last week in the Big 12. And with that, let's head to Lubbock, Texas, and join Bill Land, who has more in this week's Big 12 Conference Cuts. Thanks, Jim. Folks here in Lubbock are jazzed as Texas Tech and Texas A&M go at it in the Big 12 Conference opener for both ball clubs. Last weekend, some exciting action around the Big 12. The big news is the top-ranked teams keep those rankings. A&M and Nebraska both staying in the top six nationally, and Oklahoma jumps into the top 25 as the Sooners are off to a 3-0 start thanks to a win on the road against Louisville. We've got it all for you in this week's Conference Cuts. It was a week to be fleet-footed moves and fast cuts were the order of the day. And for those who don't have it, well, nature has its way of putting out the herd. We've seen this before from the feet of Kansas State's David Allen, but never from this far out. The 94-yard punt return against Iowa State tied the K-State and Big 12 record. It was his sixth punt return for a touchdown in his career. He needs just one more to tie the NCAA record. Colorado's Ben Kelly has had his own share of kick returns for touchdowns, and he was up to his old tricks against Washington, returning a kick 98 yards for a touchdown. And when is Ben Kelly not in the right place at the right time? A week after returning a fumble 96 yards for a touchdown, he did it again against the Huskies, this time from 38 yards out. But the golden foot of the week belonged to Texas A&M's Terrence Kitchens. The Aggies had just awarded him a full scholarship on the Thursday before their game with Southern Miss and he responded with a 62-yard field goal. At the time, that put him 8 for 8 in field goal attempts. Yeah, I knew how long it was before I kicked it because when they backed up the penalty, I looked to see how far it was, but I knew I had a shot at it because I've kicked one there from there before in practice, so I just gave it a shot. Another huge day for OU's Josh Heifel. 426 passing yards and five touchdown tosses. Go hum, two more Sooners passing record. Next week, Big 12 Showcase will come to you from the State Fair of Texas as we preview, among other things, the Texas-Oklahoma football game and the Battle of the Red River. Let's go back now to Jim Knox in Lincoln, Nebraska. All right, thanks, Bill. Don't forget to join Bill Land at the Big 12 Showcase each and every week. Check your local listings. Up next, we'll check the other Big 12 teams in action today, including a big preview of tonight's Texas A&M-Texas Tech game. Time coming to a close in Lincoln, Nebraska. Cornhuskers dominating Oklahoma State 31 to nothing. And welcome back, everyone, to the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report. Time to check the Big 12 schedule for today. Already underway, Kansas at home against SMU. That game in the first quarter and no score. Also this afternoon, Oklahoma in a big one against Notre Dame. Later today in Austin is Texas against Kansas State. Missouri against Memphis. Now tonight, Baylor at home against North Texas. And Texas A&M against Texas Tech. Anytime these two teams match up, it is quite a shootout. And we'll more on this big shootout. Let's go up to Lubbock. Join Ron Thulin and Artie Chikatino. 
Oh, thank you, Joseph. Well, Wardy and I are at the Copper Caboose here in Lubbock, Texas. Synonymous with Texas, obviously, steak, chicken fried steak, barbecue, and, of course, football. Wardy, we have four Big 12 teams in the state of Texas. There are the natural rivalries, but Texas Tech, Texas A&M is a big one. You know what, though? We've had our share of rivalries this year, Ron, between Colorado State and Colorado, Iowa State and Iowa, but this might be the biggest one we've had so far this year. And one of the reasons here in the state of Texas that Texas A&M and Texas Tech love to get after each other is defense. And Texas A&M right now has arguably one of the best defenses in the United States. In fact, you look at this game, the last five years, seven points or less has decided the outcome of this game. This ought to be just one great showdown football game tonight. Well, football, of course, is coming up later, but right now, Jim Knox, it's time for Artie and I to dig into a little chicken fried steak, a little steak, and by the way, Jim, it's all <laughs> low fat. <laughs> All right, that should be quite a game. Coming up next on the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report, we'll go back up to the booth and rejoin Drew and Keith and recap first half highlights. Stay with us. Big 12 football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. By Sitco, you know me. And by Sleep In, the next time you travel, stay at Sleep In in a class by itself. The fountain in front of the student union here on the campus of the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. Drew Goodman, Keith Jackson, Jim Knox, and I don't know about the skin today. A little cool for my blood. A little cool for my blood also. I, you know, I spent a couple years up there in Green Bay, Wisconsin, but I've got acclimated to that southern weather all over again. Yeah, you, you think it's time to put the heater on when it dips below 80. <laughs> Dan Haydenfeld will kick it deep to either Jamal Fobbs or Terrence Richardson. Also Marcus Jones back deep. Jones closest to you, 31 to nothing. Oklahoma State has a whole lot of work to do. This is Fobbs from the two. the years Nebraska has been so prolific offensively and outstanding on defense what has often been lost has been the special teams play they are always terrific in the kicking game BJ Tiger started the game you can tell he's fired up most of the second quarter Ben Bowling took the snaps but BJ Tiger will begin here in the third quarter and if you're Bob Simmons what do you tell your team down 31 to nothing at half time? well you tell your team hey we need to rally we need to try to come back and if we don't come back and win the game let's do some positive things to take into the next game next week Bob lines up in the eye Kevin Brown is the fullback and they give it to Fobbs and Fobbs has a big opening Caught from behind at the 50-yard line easily. The biggest play offensively for Oklahoma State today. Keel Craver got him from behind. You know, this offensive line started playing great going into the set, going into halftime. They just opened up a nice hole, and it's all the speed of Jamal Fogg to get through the hole in the first downfield. And that's some great catch-up speed by Keel Craver there. Brown gets that big body moving through, and he'll get six yards. Tony Ortiz, Carlos Polk make the tackle. Our halftime numbers, look at this, passing yards. Oklahoma State was 0 for 5. They didn't have any. And in terms of rushing, they were limited to 45 yards. They wanted to come in, Keith, and run the football. That hasn't happened. You know, they wanted to win the time of possession, and that's what, that would keep them in the game, but they're behind right now. Two good runs to start the third quarter, and Jamal Fobbs lowers his pad level and gets to about the 41-yard line. He's going to be about a yard or so shy of where he needs to get. When you, ha when you have great programs, Drew, and you go in at halftime of games and you get in the locker room, the coaches most of the time do not have to say anything. It's the players that are around. Bob Simmons will look at them, and the leaders on his team will say, hey, we've got to go out there, and we've got to quit embarrassing ourselves, and we've got to put the points on the board. He gets a 
good block. Now he's run out of room. Kramer's there again. Ralph Brown, both corners. Nebraska just runs so well that when you think you have an opening, a lot of times you don't. You know, this Nebraska defense that has speed. You're talking about two great defenses, but when you watch Nebraska, they go Julius Jackson, he strings it out. You got Keo Graver, who's done a great job of coming up and tackling. And it looks like it's big holes there. There's going to be big plays, but they don't get there. And they do a great job of tackling in that secondary of Nebraska. Yeah, Oklahoma State will punt. Craver's back at his own 10. <laughs> Ball, ball start on the offense, remains fourth down. Oklahoma State came out, got the big run from Fobbs, got a decent play on first down. Kevin Brown picked up six yards, but then they couldn't convert. short punt by Elder off the side of his foot. It's down at the 20-yard line. A uh, punt of uh, just 27 yards. His last one went 24 yards. Eric Crouch had a big first half. He'll lead Nebraska back onto the field. You can see his confidence growing with each start he gets. He's, he's throwing the ball pretty well. When you look 6 of 11, he, has, he probably has, still has a nice quarterback rating uh, so far in the game for 109 yards. He's doing a great job there. But I bet you the coach told him at halftime, you keep doing what you're doing. If you see something you want to throw the ball, go ahead and audible and make it happen. Willie Miller breaks a tackle for a moment and then gets just a couple of yards. He'll start in the backfield with Dan Alexander. That Willie Miller is a load. You never see that first guy just bring him down to the ground, and that's the way you want your fullback to be, and that's the way the fullbacks have been here in Nebraska. They've had the ability to run the ball, and also they're great blockers, and he's just one of those guys who have been in a long line of great fullbacks. He's a good student also, 3.4 in the classroom, communications major. And Bobby Newcomb back out of the field. Here's Crouch keeping. And he gets a couple of yards, and then a flag comes in late. Looks like that uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State's a little frustrated right now. I can see one of the guys holding their arms up in the air like I didn't do it. And usually that means that they took a swing at somebody. Terry Turlington will let us know. Ryan's a fiery guy, and he knows that to play defense, you have to play on the edge. Well, you know, he's probably not too upset about that. He's probably going to the sideline and say, you should have done it a lot earlier. You guys are not playing as aggressive. That came out of that family, that Ryan family. They love to be aggressive. They get a 15-yard penalty. That's part of the game. Yeah, not always a bad thing, huh? No. Crouch on a throwback. He's got Wistrom again. Big play for Tracy Wistrom, his fourth catch of the afternoon. When you have a great running game, when you have a terrific running game and you run the ball inside, outside well, then the thing that you can do is you can run play action passes. And here's a play action pass. He has the ability to look back across the grain and throws back to his big tight end, Wistrom, who takes the ball downfield, breaks the tackle. He took 170 yards last year, so he has the ability to get an open and field and make some plays happen. He took that one 36 yards. Crouch with a flag down, gets about 13 to the 11. But a flag came in at the 20. And usually when a flag's that far downfield, somebody was holding on a little, level, a little bit too much, had a little cough. 
but that was a great run by Crouch, but it was a great open hold. The offensive line is doing a great job. I tell you what, the, uh, the fullback is doing a great job. That's illegal participation against oh. Oklahoma State. They might have 12 men on the field. And it might have been Flowers. I think he was trying to get off the field. On the defense, the penalty is declined. First down. Well, today you need 12 people to stop this Nebraska offense. And if Rob Ryan could keep 12 guys on the field, he'd go for that. Coach Simmons not happy about that. You know, that's one of those mistakes you one of those mistakes you just don't make. You don't have 12 guys on the field. You don't don't hurt yourself anymore on a play like that. You know, something's going to happen physically, but that's not a physical mistake. Bob Simmons, Oklahoma State had such high hopes for this year, and obviously the season's still very young. Well, they lost Tony Lindsay. That hurt. They had 18 senior starters to begin the campaign. This is Miller. He's still chugging away. Oh, the crowd will love this run. That is vintage Nebraska football. Hard nose, running up in the middle, pow driving. And you know, when you see plays like that, it wasn't a big play. He didn't get a whole bunch of yards. It was the effort. And you know what? Nebraska fans love great effort. I think he got hit harder by his own offensive lineman than he did the guys from Oklahoma State. And he's still driving, trying to get the extra yards. And that's what Nebraska fans love. They love the heart of great players. Charlie McBride, the longtime defensive coordinator, says at Nebraska, we win with work ethic. That's what we're all about. Here's the pitch. Touchdown, Nebraska, Dan Alexander. His third rushing touchdown of the year. Big man is down. That's 69. It's Adam Jolch. And that's a good sign. Jolch is getting up. And when I say big man, emphasize big. 6'5 and 320. You know, he was hustling out there to get an extra block. I think he got his first block, and he was hustling over to get an extra block because he wants to get downfield and make something happen. You know, when you look at Adam Jolch, he's a guy who speaks for the D.A.R.E. program drug awareness program, and if he's a guy as big as he is, 6'5", 320, he tells me not to do drugs, I'm not going to do them. You bet. Josh Brown, extra point. It is 38 to nothing, Nebraska, with 9.44 to go in the third quarter. Alexander gets in the end zone, his third rushing touchdown of the year. Nebraska extends their lead to 38 to nothing. And Aiden Felt kicks it out of the end zone. So Oklahoma State will have it at the 20 yard line. Here's the touchdown again by Alexander. It all starts with the quarterback, of course, and he comes down the line doing a great lead. The offensive linemen are doing a great job, and look at Winstrom. I called him big pass, but I'm making a great block. You got the, the, the receivers out there making great blocks, and then when you get Dan Alexander at 245 pounds, shoulder upfield, and you only got two yards to get to the end zone, there's no stopping. Tom Beveridge did a good job blocking the corner. There's our Buick scoring drive, six plays, 80 yards. The big play, another hookup between State fan tuning in, you're saying, hey, we're down 38 to nothing. How come we're not throwing the football? Well, the one thing that, that, that Bob Simmons wanted to do is he wanted to make sure that he could run the ball and get physical. Those guys hadn't been doing that. He's sending them a message also. He said, we're going to get physical today. We may not win this game, but we're going to get physical today. We're going to run the ball inside. And also, you, you can't get completely out of character. And throwing the ball 40 times, even with Tony Lindsay healthy, is not wants to do and they still are without a pass completion today Ethan Howell on the outcut the intended target it'll be third down and nine the 
Cowboy possessions. That's a whole lot of punting for Scott Elder. He's having a big time day of punting. He gets to get the ball a lot. That's not a great thing to see if you're the offensive coordinator and you're the head coach of this team because you thought that you could do some of the things that you did last year to stay in the game. Three-step drop, slant, complete, first down yardage. It's Jamal Fobbs who lined up in the slot. Now that secondary Nebraska does a great job of covering, but the best cover guys are outside. What they do is they go in the slot, and you got Mike Brown covering, and he's a he's a he's a safety. So you got him on Richardson, who's an outstanding punt returner, and he gets the ball in the open field. He's dangerous. I wouldn't mind seeing them get the ball to Richardson a lot more. Well, first completion of the day. And flags will fly after that. Brown got involved with Josh Lynn. And Josh Lynn is just, he's trying to be aggressive. He probably got that pep talk at halftime. We want you to go out there. We want you to make some plays. Offensive lineman, you're not doing your job. You get those kind of talks, and you want to go out there and do a great job, and sometimes you get a little over-aggressive. Tiger, and you, the flag's going to come in at the end of the play, Keith. Well, you thought they would call Josh Lynn for getting there late hitting, but they called a holding call. So they marked the 15 off, and it remains second down from the 41-yard line of Oklahoma State. So even when they do something right, they end up hurting themselves. Well, I don't know so much they did something right, Drew, because it looked like it was a busted play from the beginning, and, to and, and, and B.J. Tiger did a great job of just taking off and using his feet. Jackson shows blitz. They bring four. Tiger will run again. Get to the 48-yard line. Ralph Brown will get credit for the tackle. That'll set up third down at about the six. B.J. Tiger's quite an athlete. That's that old quarterback draw. They drop him back, make it look like he's throwing a pass, and then what he's going to do is find an open hole and take off and run. And this is the one thing that he really can do is run with the football. And he has that ball tucked in. He made a promise that he wasn't going to fumble again this year. Well, he carried that football to class. He, he carried it when he stretched. Whatever he did, the last two weeks, he had a football in his hand, literally. B.J. short drop, slant is caught, and it'll be enough for a first down. This time it's Terrence Richardson. That was a good throw. I tell you what, that was great coverage by Ralph Brown, too. What happens is Richardson had to push him up a little bit. You don't mind getting your ball in the hands of great players like this, but that was a tight throw and an outstanding catch by Richardson right there. B.J. Tiger, as you look at Richardson, and there's B.J. He played hoop for Eddie Sutton in 97. Well, he probably can elevate, you know, he wouldn't mind being a defensive back also. He played the defensive back most of last year. Here's the reverse. Richardson gets a block. And he's knocked out of bounds inside the five-yard line. Good block by Jeff Machado. We talked about the, that you should get the ball in Richardson's hand, and they did. They find some ways to get the ball in that playmaker's hand, and he takes this ball around the corner with an impressive run and a great block out there. But what's more impressive is Shaw 
is doing a great job of running down. It looked like that was going to the end zone, and you got Shaw, who weighing uh, 220 pounds, who runs down the guy. But Machado did a great job of blocking out in open field. First and goal, give it to Brown, and he has stood up. Tony Ortiz, number 37. The Sam linebacker, originally from the South Bronx, grew up in Westbury, Connecticut. Came a long way to play his college football. I'll tell you what, I bet they took that personally the last time. When you look at Tony Ortiz, he's been doing a great job, but they took that play personally. They don't want any positive yard. They want to go come out of this game and be the number one defense in the nation, and they've been doing a great job so far. Touchdown, Marcellus Rivers. First time we've called his name all day. When you have a tight end like Marcellus Rivers, and you think about a tight end they had here named Alonzo Mays, you think you would get the ball in his hand a lot more because he creates mismatch for you, and that's what that's why you want to get him the ball. He's a big target at 6'4 and 235 pounds. He's able to go up and get that ball, and that's why he came down with the touchdown on that one, Drew. Tim Sidness will attempt the extra point. And he hooked it, but he got it through. So the Cowboys are on the board, but they trail 38-7. to For Rivers, his third touchdown of the year. Big 12 football is brought to you by National Car Rentals. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. By Sitco, you know me. And by Dodge. Coliseum in the background where the outstanding Nebraska women's volleyball team competes. They're usually around the top of the country in women's volleyball. This one's gonna get past Joe Walker, get in the end zone. Uh, Nebraska will have it at the 20-yard line. Here's the touchdown again to Marcellus Rivers. You know, Marcellus Rivers is a great, great, great tight end. But the one thing that he can do is he can jump. He can go up and get ball. But when you have a mismatch between him and Ralph Brown out there, Ralph doesn't have a chance. He's arguably one of the best cover corners in the nation, but he doesn't have a chance against the 6'4", Marcellus Rivers. And Rivers did a good job of just boxing him out. That's just playing old-fashioned basketball and get the rebound. So Oklahoma State, the Buick scoring drive, 88 yards. Crouch in trouble. Flag comes in, and Crouch is still going. How about that run? He avoided the sack. He also avoided the strip of the football and made something positive happen, but hold everything. Well, that's the way Rob Ryan teaches. If you can go after that ball and make a positive play, go after the ball. So he did, but they didn't know that Crouch was so strong. He just pulled away from that and took off running. Yeah, it's going to come back. There's Dominic Rayola, the center. Well, they do a good job of getting in there and dumbing Griola. Got a handful of jersey right there. You can see it right there. He has a handful of jersey. He just let him go. And then Kraut does a great job of just avoiding the sack and taking off running. Boy, that is strong. That is strong. Then a little nifty move. He shows that he could be a tailback. And then he drops the hammer when he turns that corner. Robbie Gillum came on a safety blitz. He thought he had the sack. He's also had the presence of mind. He was trying to strip the football, but ended up with neither. Oh, man, what a hit Kratz took. He got rid of the football. And Alexander gets out to the 17-yard line. Kratz got blown up. Robbie Gillum. It was there defensively. You know, that's the, that's the worst thing about the option is that all is fair in, in, in that war. So when Crouch comes down the line, he's available being hit. You can't say it was a late hit on the quarterback, so you can take your hit right there. But he gets the ball out, the pitch relations, and the, and the running back gets a positive gain of field. But he took a punishment for it. At that time, Gillum made sure he wrapped him up. 
second and 13. And Crouch will get out of bounds after about five. You know, the great thing is at halftime, what you can do is you can go into the locker room and say, defense, this is the game plan, this is what we're doing wrong, and then you can come out the second half and do a better job of defending the option. They're doing a better job this half of defending the option because they had a chance to go over and evaluate what they were doing wrong at halftime. That helps. There's Matt Davison. You know, he's caught a pass of 20 straight. Doesn't have a reception yet today. trying to get it to Davis in there. Kevin Williams got a big mid up in the air. And Nebraska will be forced to punt. It's great to have those guys that are 6'5", because they can get their arms up in the passing lane. And that's what happened on that play with Kevin Williams. Terrence Richardson back at his own 35-yard line. The nation's number two punter. Dan Haydenfeld came in averaging better than 48 yards of boot. Oh, this one, he got off the side of his foot. Takes a good hop for him, out of bounds at the 39-yard line. That's where Oklahoma State, Oklahoma State will have it when we return. in the third quarter, 38-7, to seven, Huskers. Let's take a look at our Sitco, you know me. I hold the Nebraska records for most offensive attempts in a game and most yards in terms of punt return yardage in a season. Who am I? We'll let you know in a little bit. trying to hook up with Fobbs and the free safety Clint Finley had the coverage. This black shirt defense is tremendous. Terrific secondary veteran group and they have four good defensive tackles for Charlie McBride. Kaiser Warren, Jason Lohr who's not playing today because he has a bursa sack problem in his day and Jeremy Schlechter. Lore is in there. Simmons on the delay gets eight. Lore wasn't scheduled to play, but he is in there playing. They like his ability. And the defensive rankings look coming into this football game. The Cowboys and the Huskers were three and four in the country. That is strong, but coming out of this game, there's going to be some change of, of who's top dog because the Nebraska has been playing well, but when you look at Oklahoma State, they've had a difficult time with that option of Nebraska. Nebraska said they were motivated by those numbers coming in. Here's Simmons. He'll be very close to a first down. Julius Jackson there defensively, number 50. Charlie McBride was telling us yesterday, he said, I, I didn't have to remind my kids this week that they were one notch ahead of us in the national rankings defensively. And you know one thing about it is, is that the offense got a little offended about that too. You see it out here today. You're saying, wait a minute, these guys think they're, they're good. They're going to have to stop us. And you know, they practice one-on-one. -on -one. Charlie McBride said they practice one-on-ones during the week. So when you're practicing against really a talented defense like your own at Nebraska, then when you get up against Oklahoma State, their, their defense doesn't seem as tough as they really are. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of schools won't do that, but about 12 snaps a week on Wednesday, the first team O will take on the first team D. And Charlie kind of chuckled yesterday, says, you know, we can't go any more than 12 because it, it can get ugly. Guys start getting real physical. And he also said they lose sometime. So, you know, that's saying that the offensive linemen of, of, of Nebraska do a great job. And the Cowboys have been held to 186 yards thus far by the black shirts. Tiger all kinds of time. 
Jeremy Schleck to get some from behind. That's pretty good when you have a 290-pound defensive tackle chasing down an athlete like Tiger. I tell you what, Tiger tucked that ball. The one thing that Tiger will do is he will tuck the ball to run. He only has one interception this year, and that reason why is because he's, he won't throw the ball in double coverage or throw the ball when he feels like he doesn't have the advantage. Richardson to the top, second and seven. Blitz coming. They have a screen set up, and Simmons couldn't catch it. And it's just as well, because Schlechto was right in the vicinity. I tell you, one guy was coming on that play. You hadn't heard his name for his turnovers today. That's Julius Jackson. He's done a terrific job. But when you look at when you look at Tiger, Tiger's trying to drop back. He's trying to draw the defense to him. And so Julius Jackson was a guy who got upfield, but he got grabbed a little bit. He complained to the referee. All Tiger's trying to do is trying to get back. They're trying to set up a string. So he got to wait. But you know what? Julius Jackson gets there so fast, he rushes the throw. The other thing about Jackson is he has one career start. He usually plays behind Eric Johnson, who has a knee injury. Tiger on the slant route, and it is behind Jamal Fobbs. Clint Finley had the coverage in Oklahoma State. Ago against Mississippi State. They want to isolate and get him the ball, especially when you have two receivers. You take and you shift him out. What that means is they got to cover him man-to-man uh, -man with like a strong safety. Walker and Newcomb go back. It's a good punt by Elder. of 48 yards, but a net of just 28. And the you know me question again. I hold the Nebraska records. Most offensive attempts in a game. Most yards and punt returns in a season. There he is. Bobby Newcomb, who was a true freshman two years ago, was a dynamic player. And last year he battled through all sorts of injuries. Primarily his knee had surgery after the season. Thing about Bobby Newcomb is I believe that Bobby Newcomb helped the team. He made this a better team, but the one thing he did is he helped himself. I think that he has an opportunity to go to play in the NFL at the position that he's playing right now at wing back or wide receiver and be able to catch the ball and make big plays. Pharrell Buckhalter will get about three or four yards. You know, the game sounds physical when you have Buck Halter and you have Alexander running up in there. You can just hear the pops. It's just like shoulder pads. are like, flat, flat, flat. You know, now that D'Angelo Evans has quit the football team, the one thing Nebraska does not have at eye back is one of those real nifty guys that they seemingly have always had. They got a lot of guys that'll fudge you and a quarterback that can make you miss an Eric Crouch. He's out to the 36-yard line. And they'll move the chains again for the Huskers. I had an opportunity to see one of those backs last night, a guy by the name of Mike Rozier, and he said that this guy, Eric Krause, can flat foot fly, and he loves seeing him run the ball. I said, Mike, but if you were back there in the eye back and you were dotting it, you could take it to the house too. And boy, it'd be nice to see a great quarterback and a speedy receiver, I mean, a speedy quarterback and a speedy running back in the same backfield. Willie Miller. He'll get about three yards. He was in it. Left guard for Nebraska. The true freshman from Hawaii, Toniu Finotti, who is 6'4 and 330 pounds. There he is. You know what? He won't be 18 until the Colorado game. He's 17. He might still be growing. We told Coach, Coach Frank Solis that he has some more weight to gain. And Coach Frank said, I hope not. <laughs> Crouch to Buckhalter. And he 
gets to about the 41-yard line. Evan Howell, 28, came up and made the play. You know, the pipeline at Nebraska, generally, you don't see the field until the very earliest your junior year. Here's a guy who's a true freshman getting a play. You know, it's hard to play as a true freshman, but when you're talented, they want to get you in the game. And what this does is down the line, if one offensive lineman go down, they have a guy with experience who can step in and play for the rest of the year. Third down and four. Crouch cuts back, and he is cut down a yard short of the first down. Raymond Cato made the tackle. And Nebraska will kick it away. Arifala.com, lineman profile of the week, center Dominic Rayola. And he started last year as a freshman. First time that happens since the early 90s. He leads the team in pancakes. We got a definition for pancakes, didn't we, yesterday? Yeah, we did. That's that when you get de-cleated. You have to be on your back, and all four of your limbs have to be up in the air. And that's a pancake. Terrence Richardson from the 12. Richardson with a seam. job by Dan Hayden. The flag comes in, but Hayden felt the putter made the open field tackle after the long return by Richardson. And they told us that Hayden felt isn't just a punter. He's a good enough athlete that he could actually play a position. That's what Coach Solis said yesterday. He said, oh, you know what? I've been thinking about what position could he play because he's so gifted. And you know what? That's a pretty good return against maybe 12 guys. On the kicking team, penalty is declined. First down, Oklahoma State. Run of 43 yards. Richardson brought it back, 39. Three quarters done in Lincoln, Nebraska. And the Huskers firmly in control, 38-7. to seven. Drew Goodman, Keith Jackson, and Jim Knox. And speaking of Jim Knox, let's check in with Jim. All right, hey, Drew, checking out Willie Miller on the bench. Right now they're working on his ankle. He said he heard it pop. Doesn't seem to be serious. He could go back in, but why not? They're leading by only 36 points. Also, Sonny Miller over here, very concerned about Willie, but he should be all right. Tiger, deep throw. And he was behind Ethan Howell. Almost looked like Howell. He thought Howell was going to run a, a corner route. Howell took it toward the post. Yeah, he thought he was going to run a fade and go on the outside of him, and he actually went on the inside, and sometimes that happens. Let's take a look at the Cowboys' game plan and check their report card thus far. Well, the one thing they couldn't do is hurt themselves, and they got seven turnovers, I mean, seven penalties. But they, but they should have, they, they, they helped themselves in the turnover category. They have not had one of uh, possession. Movement on the offensive line by Oklahoma State. Before the snap. It's going to push them back five yards. Before the snap, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. When you look at the time possession, it's close, it's close but they, they're not winning the touchdown battle. And you know what? When you have to force Crouch to throw, he's done a pretty good job so far of throwing the ball, but he's done an effective job running, and that's what you want to stop him from doing is running the ball today. Yeah, Keith, he has 61 yards on the ground and a touchdown, five and a half yards to carry, and seven of 13 and another touchdown in the air. So he's been effective both ways. B.J. Tiger, second and 15. grades well when you look at the running backs you got two touchdowns out of them that is great and you know what Ravel young buck when you go oh for five in the first half that's doing your job and you know what a turnover margin is not that great with a block punt but that's okay when you have 38 points on the board you're not really worried about that turnover margin right now third a dozen hands. 
Well, you got B.J. He takes his he takes his drop as a three-step drop, and then he plants and he follows through and he throws the ball. He's kind of delayed, but the one thing he did it, it was it was a good enough pass to be caught right there, and it would have been a first down. A young guy like that needs the guys around him to start making plays for him so he can get a lot more confidence. Ninth punt of the day for Scott Elder. Walker and Newcomb back deep. Walker just doesn't believe in a fair catch, does he? You got to admire his courage. And a flag, several thrown right where he caught it. You wonder if they got too close to him. Turlington listening intently. I guess this is cut and dried, huh? Well, the one thing you got to figure out, did they get pushed in the back? The reason why they were close, did the guy come into them uh, when he being Walker when he was trying to catch the ball? So it, the reason why they invaded his space, I guess they're trying to figure out what happened there. And you love to see this. I, I know fans don't love to see it because it takes too much time. But you want, ultimately, the call to be right. So you want all the input you can get and, and then sort it out. That is exactly what Terry Turlington, who's a veteran referee, is uh, doing right now. They used to just make the call. If the guy made the call, that's what it was. But now they allow the officials to come in and to help the other official out to make the correct call. Yeah, you mentioned something earlier today. You played here on a couple of occasions that these fans great fans and they are for many reasons they, they come out no matter what the weather conditions are let's see if we can pick up uh, we'll come back to that thought in a moment let's try to pick that up we get over punt and then you think with the ball being that high taking that time in hang time you probably think that he's going to make a fair catch but he doesn't and they're waiting for him to catch the ball but they're standing around but the ball falls a little short and we look at walker he comes up into them Look at it straight. Here we go. Personal foul on the receiving team. Holding on the offensive team. A buffer zone violation on the kicking team. We will have a post-possession enforcement. We will go to the end of the kick. Nebraska will be penalized half the distance to the goal. First down. No wonder that took a while. just one play. It was a lot of stuff going on there, but they got it worked out. Just to pick up the thought about the Nebraska fans is that not only do they come out no matter what the weather conditions are, but they are extremely knowledgeable and very respectful of the opposition. They've had a lot to cheer about today. Fourteen minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Frank Solich's team leading 38-7. to They're trying to get to 5-0. and There's one goal every year in Lincoln, Nebraska. That's to win a conference championship and a national championship. That's why, though 9-4 is an outstanding record in most places, there were some that were disappointed a year ago because the four losses were the most they'd had in a long time. You know, there's a lot of teams around the nation that will take nine wins any day of the week. Well, after some adversity early in the season, the well-publicized departure from the program of D'Angelo Evans, the quarterback controversy, if you will, earlier in the season, Nebraska, when they take the football field, puts it all behind them, don't they? Well, this is a machine, and you know, you read some things about it, and they're going to keep clicking no matter what happened. And that D'Angelo Evans thing, I, I like the fact where I read where the players made a decision, and they felt that he left them. 
not the team, so players can make a decision like that. Well, here are the 98 losses. They lost on the road to Texas A&M. No shame in that. They finished 11th in the country. Texas was the first unranked team to beat Nebraska here in the last 11 years, but they finished the season 15th. And, hey, they had the Heisman Trophy winner, maybe the greatest back in college football history. And then... They lost to Kansas State, who some thought would win a national championship last year, including myself. And uh, then they lost in the Holiday Bowl to Arizona. So they lost to, to four very good teams. Evidently, what has happened is that Terry Turlington has gone to the sideline. And you saw him get off the phone there. They may be rethinking the ruling that we just heard prior to the break. One thing that you alluded to earlier is that you want to get it right. You want to get it right because it's important for both teams. Even though it's taking a little time to get it right, you want to get the right, right call. And now Terry's making his way to the far side of the field. I think he wants to let Frank Solich know exactly what will transpire. We might punt this thing again. teams, Iowa State and Texas, both have an extra week to prepare for Nebraska. And Iowa State is a tough outfit, particularly in Ames. That game on the 13th, November 13th, against Kansas State will be the game that I would love to be in the stand and watch. That's going to be a revenge game. Coaches always talk about there's no such thing as a revenge. You just watch. Coaches may say a player's no better, right? Jeff Perino's in at quarterback. Oklahoma State claiming that Nebraska moved. Encroachment on the defense. Top yard penalty. Still first down. I guess not. So a free five yards for the Huskers. Truly, Riola shouldn't know how to just flinch his wrist a little bit yet. He hadn't learned that trick of the trade of drawing a defensive lineman offside. And if he has, boy, that's a smart move. Perino's waited his turn. 6'2", 210 pounder from the beautiful town of Durango, Colorado. And the fullback, Tyrone Euler. Gets a few, 35. He's a redshirt freshman from Battle Creek, Nebraska. Let's talk about a guy in Perino that has battled and battled to get on the field. He missed 1997 and 1998 because he had three knee surgeries. In fact, at one point in 1998, he was a student assistant coach. But he's persevered, and he said, I want to keep playing. And he's getting his opportunity. He played last week against Missouri. And finally, has to throw it out of bounds. Marino. A lot of quarterbacks won't do that. They try to escape, but if you're going to be tackled, just throw the ball away out of bounds and let's try it over again. Eric Crouch, I would imagine, probably done. What a good guy. We got a chance to visit with him for a while yesterday. Bright, mature. Very talented. Marino able to uh, extract. 
distract himself from the grasp of Jaquay Thomas. I tell you what, he, he doesn't get the same pitch relations. You can tell when you have a different quarterback in the game. He comes down the line. We right here, if there was Eric Crouch, he would turn up and pitch the ball. They get too close over there, and if he keeps trying to run over guys like that, Eric Crouch might be back in the game. Third down and four. Robbie Gillum, 41, has been pretty active. Boy, he's the guy that said that he's, I'm just happy to be here. I'm just having a great time. You know, he didn't feel like he should be on the team or have a scholarship. So J.B. Flowers had hobbled off earlier. Gillum's played a lot of football here in the second half. And a timeout on the field with the Nebraska Cornhuskers leading 38 to seven over Oklahoma State. Welcome back to Lincoln, Nebraska with Keith Jackson. I'm Drew Goodman. One of the things Nebraska wanted to get accomplished today is play good offensive football games back to back. They had a great game against Missouri and they've done pretty well today against Oklahoma State. Well, the one thing about it is that defense have been playing well. They've asked the offense to step up. And you know, the offense hasn't had a bad output, but it's just the point that it's not Nebraska output. Nebraska needs to be able to move the ball downfield, score a lot of points, and be able to rush the ball, Drew. Well, the numbers for Eric Crouch running the football today. 61 yards. He's made so many good decisions. Not only just on the option, but throwing the football as well. Perino throws it in the flat. This is Bobby Newcomb, and Bobby pays for the quick pass, and he'll get to the line of scrimmage. That's all, and Oklahoma State will turn Nebraska away. Adam Edwards, Raymond Cato there defensively. I imagine as this season wears on, Frank Solich will come up with more and more creative ways to get number 12, The Rock. I think there's going to be a Bobby Newcomb package that they're going to have to put in because he's so explosive. He's the guy that's going to make plays for you. And, and people are going to get used to seeing these old plays, and they're going to call them before they happen. So he's going to put in new stuff from week to week. Now before the snap, flags flew again. a guy who's also more and more comfortable this year. We we're talking about Crouch getting comfortable. Frank Solich, I think, is a more comfortable head coach this year. Not that he was uncomfortable a year ago, but you do have a season under your belt. He's got a good football team again to work with. Richardson run out of bounds at the 43-yard line. That's where Oklahoma State will have it. They trail by 31. football has been brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. By the all-new 2000 Buick LeSabre by Buick, re-engineered to be safer than ever. And by Southwestern Bell, friendly neighborhood global. That's the national championship statue outside of Memorial Stadium here in Lincoln, Nebraska. You never know, they better save some room on that plaque. They're going to have some great teams to come, and it might be one team this year. Somebody is going undefeated in, in college football this year. That's your prediction? Somebody's going undefeated. There have been a lot of upsets. First and 10 for the Cowboys at their own 43. B.J. Tiger on the delay to Fobbs. And Fobbs gets about eight or nine before Dion Booker. The younger brother of Michael Booker, who was the number one pick of the Atlanta Falcons back in 96. He makes the play. There's another brother connection for you. Yeah, Booker and Booker. If he is successful as his brother, he'd be making a lot of money here very soon. Justin Smith. 
you know, you, you got to start working on some things if you're Oklahoma State. And the one thing that they're working on is trying to run the ball in the middle of that field, trying to get some positive stuff to take back and look at on film and say, hey, if we would have done this the first half, we would have been successful. Well, they got a push right now in the second half. It's seven apiece. Only problem was the first 30 minutes, it was 31 nothing Nebraska. Tiger knocked down by the linebackers. That was 48. Jackson. It looked like Julius Jackson there jumped up and knocked it down. I think it was Maybe Jamie not. Burrow, 48. Okay. Yeah, it was 48 Burrow. Well, I'm just so used to seeing Julius Jackson in the right spot all the time. He's, he's been successful. I thought they got his hand on another one. He's a guy that always been around the football. He has a knack of being around the football. You always say guys are like that. They may not be the fastest or the biggest, but they always around the football, and that's the kind of player he is. You bet. Reminder, next week we'll be in Boulder, Colorado. The Buffaloes and the Missouri Tigers. Minimal gain there for Jamal Fobbs. You look at the 1990s at the best records in college football. Florida State, 101-13-1. Nebraska coming in, 115-1. And Nebraska also won 100 games in the 80s. First team ever to win 100 games in back-to-back -back decades. That is extraordinary. And to think about the fans, the support, and all the tradition they have in this place. You know what? It's extraordinary, but it's not unbelievable because it's been great coaching and great fan support. By the way, in the 70s, they only won 98 games. The play clock had zero on it, and whistles blew before the snap of the ball, though B.J. Tiger got tackled anyhow. On the offense, remains third down. Now in the 90s, look at the point differential. Nebraska has scored 2,715 more points than their opponents for a difference per game of 23.2 points. That's what you call blowing a lot of people out. Those are, those are games you don't want to be involved in. I've been involved in some blowouts before in college and in the pros, and you don't like sitting on the other sideline when some team is just racking up points on you. Tiger fumbled it, picked it up. Third down and three, he gets a yard. He just looked like he took his eye off the snap then. He was trying to look downfield, trying to look over there at Howell and see if he was going to get open and then see the one-on-one -on -one coverage, and the snap came in and just hit it. Actually, I said third and three. Let me correct that. It was, it was third and 13, so now it's fourth and a dozen. So Bob Simmons will punt the football. Calls a fair catch this time and makes it at the 20-yard line. And there's the flag again. If that's a violation of the halo, that's very difficult for a, a defensive player in this position, a guy coming down covering the kick keep, because they don't know where the football is. They don't. I mean, they're running down there trying to make a tackle, and all of a sudden they see Walker coming toward them, so they know that he's coming to get the ball, and they're trying to move out of the way. They're making an effort. That's a tough call when you're on punting team. Upper violation, five-yard First down. Because he, he was set up right there, and then he all of a sudden sprints forward about six yards. Yeah, they're giving him room. They're backing away, clearly. That's a tough break. Obviously, it's uh, you're probably bearing on the outcome of this game, but that's very, very difficult for a guy covering a punt. Marino hands to the fullback. And a couple of tough yards for Dan Alexander. Dan Alexander plays eye back now, but he was recruited as a fullback. You know what? If you can get Alexander and Buck Holter in a game at the same time, then you got both your starting back. It's going to come down to that one day where you want to see them both in there. But the thing that happened is, is that, that Willie Miller got hurt early in the game. That is their starting backfield. You look at both of them, they're co-starters at running back. And Alexander's playing fullback right now. Buck Holter's playing the eye back. And Buck Holter gets the call. And he runs into Jack Golden. And Golden, the senior from Harvey, Illinois, makes a good tackle.
think they have a starter at IPAC. I think both of those guys are going to share time all year long. They're going to make plays happen. But if you can put Dan Alexander at that fullback spot every now and then and let him get one of those fullback traps, I tell you, that's going to be a positive game. Third and five. Perino. She gets maybe a yard. Zach Warner. 97, also Jack Golden around the football. And Nebraska will go three and out. We talked a little bit to Rob Ryan. And he said, you know what, I got a great group of linebackers, but I don't care what you say. It is difficult when you have to do without your leader uh, on defense. And that's be Kenyatta Wright. He's he's the guy that made plays for him to happen. And when we talked to Rob, Rob was saying, no, everybody can do this. The only difference is, is that the other guys can't change the formation. Terrence Richardson from the 30. Trying to get to the wall. Deion Booker made the tackle at the 36-yard line, a punt of 40, and a return of six. Here's the upcoming schedule for Oklahoma State. They have Texas Tech next week at home. Then they have a bye week. And then they have Kansas State at home. And then they have to travel to College Station. I tell you what, it doesn't get any easier for them. I mean, it's a, they got a lot of tough games. They were a great team last year that lost a lot of close games. They've got to go back and they've got to re-huddle and try to figure out what happened here today. Ben Bowling in at quarterback. We saw him in the second quarter. And the delay. So Fobbs, Mark Vedrill with the tackle. Well, I don't think there are any easy games in the Big 12. Bowling in the first half was 0 of 4. Tigers' three completions have all come after halftime. Tiger has the one touchdown pass to Marcellus Rivers. That is caught. Ethan Howell had to pick it off his ankles to hang on. Well, the one thing Bowling wanted to do was get that goose egg off of his completions, and he did that. But he drops back here, and he's looking for his receiver that's going down the seam, and all of a sudden, Howell comes underneath. He throws it a little bit low, but he ends up coming up with the grab anyway. He's going to get a whole lot of experience this year. He's a true freshman. Last year, he was playing at Jenks High School in Jenks, Oklahoma, right outside of Tulsa. Tradition-rich high school program. Here's third down. Bowling, good throw and a good catch right near the sticks. Caught by Howell. Fully extended. That's exactly what I was talking about earlier. You make your quarterback comfortable, and the way you make your quarterback comfortable, when they drop back and throw a pass, even though it's not right on target, you make a great catch, and Bowling did a great job of standing in the pocket and doing that. They're going to measure. Bowling's a guy that was recruited by Oklahoma, Kansas State, the University of Miami. got enough for the first down. You know, talking to Simmons, Simmons said these guys have a lot of confidence, and he doesn't want to rattle their confidence. It's just tough when you got to play against a great Nebraska defense like they had the opportunity to play against today. That'll rattle your confidence, but they've got to go back, and they've got to get some help with the running game and get some help with the receivers catching some balls and making some big plays. Draw to Fobbs, and Jamal gets to the 50. You came here a couple of times. How tough was it to play here? Well, it's tough to play here because one thing about it is going to be a little crowd noise. You're going, to, you're going to have that. And they know the right time to make it real loud so you can't hear the plays. They do an outstanding job of that. The other hard thing is they have great athletes here. When I came up here to play, you had guys like Neil Smith and Roderick Thomas playing on defense, Brian Washington. I mean, a great tradition of defensive players, so it's always tough. For a 
Well, the folks up here are just glad that your eligibility is exhausted. Let's go back a few years. Shall we reminisce for a moment, Mr. Jackson? Oh, don't do me like this. Jamel Holloway, the quarterback, in 1985, and they're going to run the reverse to the big man. And you know what? If you recall, I know it's a long time ago, but you turn the corner, you go 88 yards. That might have been the longest run in the history of tight ends. Well, there was another Keith Jackson doing that game, let's tell you that. But the great tradition here in Nebraska, those guys cheered for me after the game and shook my hand and told me what a great run that was and what a great player I was after the game. And they told you, why don't you turn pro? Knocked out of bounds after a first down is Cameron White. Pretty good job by Bowling, showing his athletic ability. The one thing that you've got to appreciate about these Nebraska fans is they love good football. You know, if you come here and you beat them, usually you get people screaming and hollering at you when you leave and getting gestures. But you know what they do? They, they say, great game, go ahead and win the Orange Bowl. I remember the years we came here, and they've been great fans. I really appreciate the Nebraska fans. They're the best. Bob gets about five or six yards. The other thing about Nebraska fans is they always stick around. And they never leave early. Obviously, this game has been decided for a while, but they hang around throughout. Here's our BMW play of the game. Little play action pass, option pass. And Crouch is going to hit Tracy Wistrom, who had a big day catching the football at tight end. That's our BMW play of the game. I bet you just did that for me, Drew. You just wanted me to feel at home. Tight end catching touchdown. That's the whole reason. Here's Fobbs. And he gets out of bounds after a first down at the 25. Bob's on the carry. Well, if you're Oklahoma State, you always want to search for positives and correct the negatives. What Bob Simmons, I imagine, will do this week. Well, the one thing you did is you had some penalties, but you didn't fumble the ball. You start looking at turnovers. You took care of the turnovers early. But this is just a dominant Nebraska team. So he said, hey, we got rid of turnovers. Now we got to be a more aggressive in the running game. We've got to score some touchdowns. Once we get down into plus 20, we need to score. Yeah, they're going to have to find a way to put some more points on the board, obviously, because they have a defense to win with. They're struggling right now to get in the end zone on offense. Over the head of Ethan Howell. Bowling's putting on a nice display of throwing the ball right now. He made a headed play a few minutes ago, going up to the line and, and almost stepping over the line, but stepping back and throwing the ball. He looks comfortable in the pocket. You know, they may get outcome the fact that he can sit in the pocket and pocket pass. They don't have to pound people like they think they have to. And he's out of bounds at the five-yard line. Hans Richardson is a nifty, nifty runner. I think he gets the ball in his hand. That's because his punt returning skill. He led OSU with 25 catches last year. He does a great job of just dropping back. You got one-on-one -on -one coverage outside. He throws it there. And now you turn into a punt returner. And then you just take off and get positive gain and try to get that ball into the end zone and make people miss. That's all. And right now, the black shirts, a lot of number twos in there, they're planning for a little bit of pride in that they have not allowed a rushing touchdown in 1999. And you can believe it's a lot of pressure. It doesn't make any difference if it's second team or third team out there. The guys on the sidelines saying, we don't want to give up a touchdown, and they want to hold them out. You look at Charlie McBride, I asked him why they call black shirts. He said, because they wore black shirts during practice. So they started calling them the black shirts. And it'll be third in goal. And there's a Cowboy player still down.
like somebody's in pain. You can see them kicking their legs down there a little bit. Bill Byrne, the athletic director here at Nebraska, was telling us earlier, one of the things they have on their master plan that's probably a few years down the road is to expand this stadium so it seats in the mid-90s. Right now, it seats close to 78,000. The player down is Brian Blackwood, junior tight end from Tulsa. Good player, too. Coach said about Blackwood, they felt that he was their best all-around tight end as far as catching the ball and as far as blocking at the point of attack. But this stadium, if they put 20 to 30,000 more seats, it still would be a sellout. That's what you call tradition. Yeah, long waiting list to get season tickets here in Lincoln. But the one thing that Blackwell does is he blocked well at the point of attack. The coaches say that. But but when you got Nathan Simmons, he's trying to get into the end zone. And those running backs, they'll run up your back every now and then trying to get a positive game. Yeah, he got uh, stretched pretty good there. Third and goal. Simmons, nowhere to go. Reminiscent of his final carry in the 98 game when they couldn't open a hole for him to get in the end zone. I'll tell you what, they play excellent run defense here in Nebraska. You know, when you look at the rich tradition of, of weightlifting and as you look at Bob Simmons looking on saying, we're going to stuff this ball down their throat, we're going to score, there's no doubt that he's going to go for it because he wants to get the ball in the end zone. But the weightlifting tradition that's at Nebraska, the fact that they're so strong in the squats and things like that, boy, I tell you what, it makes it tough for them. It'll be fourth and goal when we come back. 156 left. With the football nestled between the one and two yard line. to the end zone and he will first rushing touchdown of the year against the huskers and it's 38 13. that was a great call they ran an unbalanced line to one side and actually ran the other way that was a super call by ron cacagny you got so many guys on the right side and he pitches it to the left and when you got a guy like jamal Fobb and he's running against linebackers there's no way you're going to catch him and sidness pokes it through 38 14 we'll return to lincoln in a moment Capital in Lincoln, Nebraska. Oklahoma State has put another touchdown on the board. Jamal Fobbs from a couple of yards away. Randy Stella comes out of the end zone. Won't get close to the 20-yard line. Let's get an injury update from Jim Knox. Jim? All right, thanks, Drew. Brian Black with the tight end from Oklahoma State. Looks like he's through for the game. Lower back injury. It does not appear to be serious, but right now, Blackwood through for the game. All right, Jim. It's a great well, defense sitting there trying to ask each other what happened. Why, why is there 38 points on the board? Because they are an excellent defense. They're an excellent defense, but they had to play too many snaps in that first half against a short field. Fullback gets to the 20-yard line, and we can tell you that the executive producers of today's game are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. The coordinating producer for college football is Roy Hamilton. Today's game has been produced by the doctor, Robert Steinfeld, directed by Ken Miller. Our associate producer is Daniel Ashcraft, who's thrilled to death that his name is mentioned on the air today. And our graphics coordinator, the outstanding Tom Stoner. Vice President of Field Operations, Andrea Jenkins. that time didn't get much Sean Barry made the play 
defensively. Our spotter today, all the way from the Big Apple, Chris Shaw. For that man, Rob Ryan. I think he's going to look at this film, and though the final score won't indicate it, he's going to realize his team didn't play that badly defensively. Diedrich had that carry, and here's our Dr. Pepper oh, player of the game. Eric Crowd, 7 of 13, throwing the football, and also effective running the football. On the option, he had 11 carries for 61 yards. The one thing you don't, don't see in that rushing through is the fact that he drew the defensive end to him and had three pitches to his running back all day long to score. Another thorough victory for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They came in number six in the country, and they roll 38 to 14. And for Oklahoma State, the sophomores, juniors, and seniors won't get another crack at the Huskers because they're off their schedule for a couple of years. Of course, Oklahoma State in the South Division of the Big 12 and Nebraska in the North. They've only defeated Nebraska twice, 1960 and 1961, the first two times they played. Let's get it down on the field. Here's Jim Knox with a winning head coach. All right, Jim? thanks, Drew. Coach, you have to be extremely pleased. Complete domination today. Offense moved the wall well against a very stout Oklahoma State defense. Also, the defense played extraordinary well. I thought we played uh, particularly well in the first half. Uh, not real excited about our second half play. You know, we, we need to uh, be able to play four quarters. Uh, we've stopped ourselves. Defensively with some penalties. We hurt ourselves a little bit defensively that way, too. So there's a lot of things to work on, uh, but we are 5-0, and and I'm proud of the way the kids have uh, uh, certainly given a great effort. Yeah, it seems like this is a team that appears to get better each game out. Well, I think that's true. Uh, uh, they've, they've really shown progress in a lot of ways. Uh, we can be a good team on all phases of it, offensively, defensively, kicking game, but we certainly need to work on some things, and we'll go about that starting Monday. Okay, Coach, congratulations on the big victory. Thank you. All right, Drew, that's the story. 38-14, to 14, Oklahoma State goes down in defeat. All right, Jim, thanks very much. Coaches are always perfectionists. I tell you what, and those coaches don't smile that much. This has been a great game for him today, and he has a lot to build on. Oklahoma State has to go back and look at some film. Nebraska will be home to an approved Iowa State team next week. Oklahoma State will be in Stillwater to take on Texas Tech. A thorough victory today for Nebraska, 38 to 14. The offense did the job on the ground and threw the football ex exceptionally well also today. And the black shirts were their normal selves. Well, plan to join us next Saturday at a special time, 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 in the Pacific time zone for our next Big 12 football telecast as the Missouri Tigers visit the University of Colorado Buffaloes. Now for Keith Jackson and Jim Knox and our entire crew, I'm Drew Goodman saying so long from Lincoln, Nebraska, where the Huskers have knocked off the Cowboys 38-14. But Jones Stadium once again put a tax on the Aggies, and so did Tammy Morris. For the second time in three years, Morris became an Aggie killer, running for 170 yards and a touchdown. At game's end, once Spike Dykes was celebrating yet another phenomenal upset of AM, Morris was carried off the field. Then came the goalposts. They went around the stadium, up the bleachers, then on a wild ride through Lubbock. Last we heard, they were passing through Altus, Oklahoma, and were meeting up with the team in Stillwater this weekend. Everyone else in the conference had their marching orders for a win, and there were some impressive steps taken towards that process, like these spectacular steps taken by David Allen of K-State on a touchdown run against Texas. Kansas State, what a run! David Allen, 35! Missouri's Devon Black used great balance, a few Memphis players, and even some teammates to keep his feet. Inside the five, Don, about the two. Oklahoma State's B.J. Tigers becoming a favorite on conference cuts, with his frequent cuts and slashes again displayed against Nebraska. But watch it, there were a fair share of defensive players who were helping some players off their feet. A&M's Michael Jamison was doling out a share of big hits. The Kansas safety Carl Neesmith took the cake with this bruising hit on the SMU Mustang and got his own fumble recovery. 
The Baylor Bears were quick-footed enough to gain 251 rushing yards in beating North Texas and earning their first win under first-year head coach Kevin Steele. And that made for a few loose feet in the locker room afterwards. The Southwestern Bell Players of the Week for last week went offensively to Texas Tech's Sammy Morris for taming the A&M Wrecking Crew defense. Defensive honors went to K-State's Mark Simino, who had a 37-yard interception return for a touchdown against Texas. Special team honors, who else but David Allen of Kansas State, a 74-yard punt return for a touchdown, gave him seven in his career. For